The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this sweet perk Thursday, March 28th, 2024. This program starts now! Sports! Are happening all around us, and that voice that you just heard chuckle in the background has been an electrifying energy in the Thunderdome this morning. The Sweet 16 starts this evening. Four games will take place. One of them not tipping off until after 10 p.m. Eastern Standard mm -hmm. Time. Hmm. Our Eastern Standard Time bias ashes growing up in Pittsburgh, right. Boston, right. all the cities that have reaped the benefits of the East Coast bias are thinking to ourselves, why is that game tipping off so late? Illinois, Iowa State, and not until 10.09 mm -hmm. this evening, but it should be a fantastic night. Now, the MLB also has its opening night taking place. The Rangers will be taking on the Cubs. The Rangers are the World Series champions of last year. We are potentially going to be there for that. Happy we're in the Thunderdome because I don't know if the juice is still there for opening day because of what happened in Seoul, yeah. South Korea a few days back with sure. the Shohei Otani. Nonetheless, the MLB journey of 162 Yuck. So many games. Too many. Everyone matters. It's gross. Maybe by the end of this thing, we'll know what the hell happened with Ipe Mitsuhara and yeah. Shohei Otani and four and a half million dollars. But nonetheless, a lot happening around the sports world. A lot happening for our program. A day that'll go down in the annals of history mm -hmm. for the Pat McAfee show. Not because the talks table is here, although you guys look fantastic at Ty Schmidt at... Boston Connor, Whoa. yeah, the the <laughs> horse. It's not the same shirt as yesterday. No, it's not the same shirt. As yesterday. But it's the same as that color as yesterday. Yeah, same color, same oh, animal, same animal. Yeah, my pop pop said he liked the horses, so I was like, all right, pop pop, I'll wear another horse. Look at you, empathy, a okay. little bit of feelings. Yeah, he's from Philly, and we're heading there soon for WrestleMania XL, baby. Hey man, you guys look great. One half of the hammer, Don. Don. Cowboys tone digs. Look at you wearing the How Bucko you shirt. Opening Ooh. day had to, you know, uh, a lot of years. Not this year. A lot of years is the only day that you could root for them before they, and they still have a winning record. So. Let's go for it. Okay? Yeah, let's go Pittsburgh Pirates. It'll yeah. be good. They got to roll they, up the chat. They might now. be. Yeah, Huge. we got Javin in the video that announced that, dogs. obviously, okay. around the internet. We learned a lot about him quickly. Uh -huh. and yeah, baseball's tough, but we'll have Jeff Passon joining us in about 28 minutes to tell us what we need to look for going into the season. That is 162 games, so literally anything can happen. We're all going to age by the end of the damn thing, but we will talk to Passon in about 28 minutes or so. We'll have Reese Davis on in the third hour to chit-chat about tonight's uh, Sweet 16 matchups, but all show. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What a time. Hell yeah. We thought maybe this was going to happen last Thursday. We're pumped. Classic miscommunication. And boy, did that build up the anticipation for today's wonderful morning. Ladies and gentlemen, 14-year NBA vet. NBA champion. A man that people call racist. Whoa. But we don't believe that's the case. No, mm -mm. not at all. He's in a room full of whites right now and brought nothing but amazing energy. Ladies and gentlemen, big part catcher. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Perk. Hey, we are lucky to have you, Perk. How you doing, pal? Oh, I'm great, man. I don't know if his uh, microphone. Listen, nope. Listen, I'm great. Hold on. I don't know if your microphone. Did someone push the button? Hold. Like, you hold. Yep. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I'm so happy yeah. to be here. Yeah. 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 My, <laughs> my wife. My wife told me I had three f bombs max to drop for the whole day. For the whole day. Okay. She knows you better than this us. This has <laughs> been a fucking unbelievable <laughs> experience. And it hasn't even started. I walked up, I pulled up, Uber driver dropped me off. I see the Thunderdome. I walk in, the energy was great. I'm like, damn. Then I had my own locker. Yeah. 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 The yeah. family vibe is here. I tell you what, this is a game changer. What's that? Yeah. This whole, everything. Everything that y'all have built 
is a game. What did you imagine it would be like? If, 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 okay, we I didn't expect to do this right at the beginning because we got a lot of basketball to talk about. Sure. Totally. And we're going to do the basketball. Oh, and also, Big Perk knows a lot about football, too. Yeah. We were talking about him earlier. Mm -hmm. Pays attention to everything happening around there. But, like, what did you expect walking into this place? Oh, well, to be honest, I didn't know. First of all, the hospitality has been great. And then I'm, I'm like, damn, y'all built this from the ground up. Well, it's a real thing. You know how you could walk in and you could – you can feel that something is fake or not. You like the energy, like I'm an energy guy. Everything is authentic. Everything checks out. Then you have a weight room in the back. You like, yeah, perk if you want to lift. I'm like, the only thing I'm doing is curl up. Yeah. The only thing I'm doing right now is curl up. Yeah, there's golf yeah. sim up there too. I don't know if it's big yeah. enough for your big ass in the entire thing, but we're lucky you're traveling out here. We appreciate you. Every Thursday is going to be fantastic. Tonight's a big one though. Sweet 16 tips off. I know you're an NBA guy. Obviously, the whole world pays attention to the March Madness. How are you feeling about March Madness? How you feel about Sweet 16? How closely can you pay attention to it all? No, you know what? I put the NBA on the back burner. During Look, March Madness? Yeah, March Madness. When you when you talk about March Madness, the one shining moment, mm -hmm. like these are when stars are born. Like you get to recognize and see and appreciate college basketball, right? And throughout this NCAA tournament, I've been seeing coaches do their damn thing on okay. the sideline. Coaches have been coaching their asses off. And when you think about, you know, the competitive nature, watching UConn, watching mm -hmm. U of H, Right, and we're watching these grown men. They're grown men out there, right, fighting over screens. Something that I wish the NBA would actually adopt and say, you know what, hey, let's let's get back to this identity. And so when you're watching a team like Clemson, you know, come on the rise and do what they're doing, I'm looking at them. I'm saying, you know what. This is what basketball is supposed to be. Okay, so it is like a glimpse of what basketball can be. That's why the whole world enjoys yeah, it. And I remember, what was it, international play a few years back? Yeah, yeah. the FIBA. The FIBA, the, then the rules changed in the NBA. Yeah, you couldn't know they like flop or mm -hmm. something. Like there was a little bit more mm -hmm. physicality. Mm -hmm. And it felt like, oh, defense is coming back, defense is coming back. I feel like there was a movement, a little bit of that. But we were just chatting with you beforehand. You're like, there's only a few teams that really play defense throughout the entire season. That I didn't know that was the case. Is that real? And why isn't it just because it's so tasking? Well, it's a, it's a real thing, but it's, it's about when you look at these teams, it's their culture, right? So you look at the Minnesota Timberwolves. I would actually tell all you people out there in the world, to watch the Minnesota Timberwolves play defense. Oh, because they're actually there. Yeah, they're We're actually, smacking the floor. They 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 get on they're on your ass like back pockets, whether that's the Bo Jeans <laughs> or True Religions. They're gonna make you uncomfortable. From McDaniels to Anthony Edwards and you have Rudy Gobert down there anchoring mm -hmm. the defense. And then yeah. you look at Tom Thibodeau, New York Knicks, with my boy, big body Brunson, Jalen Brunson, like they make you uncomfortable. You look, it's, it's like the physicality is like, hell yeah. Like, you can see that they're trying to hold you under 100 points, and it's a beautiful thing to see. And normally in the playoffs, every NBA team starts playing defense, but is it as easy just to pick right up? Like, yeah, we're going to start playing defense now? No, nah, those, those habits, like, you got to build those habits. Mm -hmm. Like, those habits got to be established in training camp. The coach got to make his presence, you know, known in training camp. And when, you know, when you see the guys starting to peak around this time, you're like, oh, yeah, they got that it fact. Okay, so let's talk about you. You won right out of high school to the NBA. Mm -hmm. So when you watch March Madness, do you miss? Do you think, man, I missed out on that a little bit or no? I, I do at times because I hear so many stories about the college experience, right? Like the college life, you know. We heard and, some stories, too. I think you experienced yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, some <laughs> college life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But, but, a little bit better. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. But, right. With, With a little, little more money. money. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, Access. So, so it's like, you know, you're watching and you're saying it. And I went to a U of H game in, in the university the Texas game, you know, about a month and a half ago, and just the vibe, right? The energy. And, and fuck, now kids are being able to get paid. Two! Mm -hmm. that was so, two. That's two. That's, that's two, two or three. Oh, yep. oh, that, you got one more. So, but it was genuine. You're a one and a half yet. But I do, I do, because, you know, we was having this debate a couple weeks ago about, you know, when it comes down to What's the like greatest championship in in my opinion? No disrespect to the football, but yeah, we'll they, leave Lombo yeah, out of it. But mm -hmm. but the NCAA tournament, everybody and their mothers are watching the NCAA tournament. March Madness, everyone, everyone. Yeah, it stops the whole world. Yeah, mm -hmm. the women's one also becoming like peak interest oh, for same folks. Deal, Numbers yeah. are higher than they've ever been. Live sports as a whole continue mm -hmm. to just go up and up. All right, Perk, let's start talking about some other sports, shall we? The one that you know. 
carries the entire sport. The real one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Drake May is having his pro day today in lovely North Carolina. Hell yeah. We have some source says on the ground who have worked with Drake May and maybe worked with like Tom Brady. Ooh. Maybe worked huh. with like Andrew Luck. Wow. Right. Maybe worked with like Peyton Manning. Okay. Right. And said that Drake May is the guy of this draft. Hell now, yeah. is he biased because he's a graduate of that particular school and he was also helping consult with that school this past year and yeah. his, I don't want to say retirement era, but like his retirement from coaching era, but can't get away from it completely because it's literally ingrained in his entire lifestyle is to be around football. We're talking about Clyde Christensen here, mm -hmm. who is <laughs> my coach at the Indianapolis Colts. Then he was down with Tampa Bay and he had Andrew and Peyton here and Tom, and he's been there for the last year just consulting, advising, and everything like that. Not allowed to be on the field, but in the meeting rooms and stuff like that. It's like this new role that a lot of teams have instituted. He says this guy's the guy. Yeah. He says uh, he's, he's Andrew. Mm -hmm, he said, mm -hmm. when I'm talking to him, I'm talking to Andrew. Interesting. Which is a very fascinating thing because Andrew went to Stanford. He went to North Carolina. So you're immediately going to assume that Andrew, much bigger nerd sure. than he is in North Carolina. Yeah. And we've heard the shit talking from his family and everything like that. He goes, they're both nerds. Okay, they look the same. Drake May might be a little bit faster than Andrew Luck. Whoa. And he said he's not saying that he's going to have the exact accomplishments of Andrew Luck because obviously Andrew Luck was an incredibly special player. But he's saying whenever he's dealing with Drake May, talking to Drake May, watching the film of Drake May and what he's going to prove in the pro day on the board and also throwing around for people, is he is very similar to Andrew Luck. And uh, he says if anybody doesn't draft him, they're going to regret it. Yeah. This is how mm. it's going to be. He said other quarterbacks might be. NFL quarterbacks as well, but he, right, 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 yeah. right, right, which is how he talks, mm -hmm. says this is an NFL guy, no questions asked. So that's very high respect coming from a guy who has a lot of respect amongst his peers around the NFL. I assume he's going to be catching up with a lot of old friends that are GMs and coaches mm -hmm. for his 20-plus years in NFL being a quarterback coach, but he's singing the praises of Drake May, and it's not because he's going to get credit for it. No. It's because he's been around him for a full year, saw him experience highs whenever they were potentially going to the college football play playoff, yep. lows, new teams around him, NCAA suspensions to like his number one weapon, yep. him potentially getting an offer, offer of $5 million to go other places, not going. It's like everything about Drake May, Clyde Christensen, former NFL coach, now advisor over there in North Carolina, screams NFL guy. So now you start looking at like number two overall pick. Yep. Because the commanders are sitting there. They need a quarterback, obviously, of the future, if mm -hmm. that's what they're going to do with a whole new face, whole new ownership, whole new everything. Are they going to get Jaden Daniels after what Jaden Daniels did yesterday at his pro day? That elbow is interesting. Yeah, yeah. it is weird. That, el that, elbow, might be an alien. that elbow is very interesting. He could spin it. But like Drake May now is the topic of conversation, and everything we're hearing from people that are close to him, it's like Drake May is going to be a guy for the next 15 years. Yeah. Your thoughts, Con Man, is the Patriots hit number three, and there's a chance that Drake May is available, but there's also a chance that Drake May. Slides up to two. Yes. And the way Clyde was talking, like, hey, don't think Chicago's yeah. not doing a little bit of snooping around on what Drake May could potentially be in the NFL as well. That's a wild thing to hear because we've all assumed Caleb's the guy, mm -hmm. then Jaden, and we heard Drake fell. But yes. instead, it seems like it's going the opposite direction. Yeah, especially with JJ flying up. Like, people are talking about him going three over Drake now, which has been kind of wild. But as a Patriots fan, I love this because I have kind of talked myself into Drake May, if you will, these last – couple weeks and then you hear the stuff from the source says about Drake May and it's like okay hold on we might be getting you know what happened with the Chargers and Herbert you might be getting that guy that falls that doesn't you know he doesn't go he's not the first quarterback he's not the second quarterback he's the one that everyone's like yeah who knows maybe he will be good maybe he won't and because of that because of the size I mean I expect Drake May to throw an 80 yard touchdown pass today <laughs> and him to be the favorite to be number one overall but he's so big which so is something big. that people are going to see whenever they see him yeah you know anything about these college quarterbacks at all going into the draft part well you know what I know that all of them are dual mm -hmm. quarterbacks. All of them can move. Dual threats. Yep. See, yep. They can move out of the pocket. You know, and I've been, you know, I've been listening, you know, listening to the analysts, listening to you guys, and I'm well, just trying to see. Don't listen to us. What, what is the knock on Drake? So his team did not win. Like, uh, they're bad. They're bad. Yeah. Okay. They lost a bad team. They lost to, like, my big takeaway during the football season about it was, like, if you're on a college football playoff run, with maybe the best quarterback in the draft. At that time, it was being talked about. Drake May might be the guy. They lost to a non-sold-out stadium. Like, they lost their college football playoff hopes 
in a non sold out stadium against Virginia. And it's like, for me, optically, that was just tough. Like, it was tough for me to handle that. But then as people start explaining the team around him, you start doing some research. It's like, this guy could have transferred and mm -hmm. every stadium would have been sold out that he played in because of where he could have went. Yep. And the team would have been 10x what his team was this year. So there's a lot of conversation around Drake May about like, they didn't win as much, mm -hmm. but is that a good thing or a bad thing? Because good thing is he was loyal to a bad team. Bad thing is he didn't get a chance to prove in like a college football playoff game or in a national title run whether or not he's going to be able to do his thing. That's but, the big convo. About. But, but that seems unfair. Yeah, it is. yeah, yeah like for that's, sure. That's, that's football. Yeah. That's unfair in any team sport because you could be doing your job, but the rest of the guys around you are just not that damn good. And How and, is that an, an indictment on him? Well, the NCAA also kept like his best player. Yeah off the field for like seven weeks wide receiver that he wasn't allowed to play for no reason. It was no classic reason. NCAA doing NCAA dumb things. But like, yeah, that's football though. That's how these quarterbacks but, get judged. But how much pressure is on the Chicago Bears to get this right? Oh, oh man. Like, Ryan Poles, yeah. It, this, is, this is game changing, mm -hmm. right? When was the last time you had this many quarterbacks and that, that were at this status that, so know, I guess it was Joey the, Tua. Yeah, I heard yeah, that. Yeah, that was last. And one, then probably. I mean, they all worked out. But like the most, the last time it was this many quarterbacks in the first round was the Mac Jones, Trevor yeah. Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields. Fields, and a lot of those did not work out. No. So, for, so for. that's like it's it's a real roll of the. It really is like what C.J. Stroud just did down in Houston. Right. Ab, H town abnormal. Yeah, yeah. 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 H town. Yeah. Oh, another? I'm, 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 a, I'm just saying I'm an ambassador for the Texans, if you didn't know. Yeah, H-Town. Another Texans? Yeah. Well, you guys were supposed to suck. That's what was <laughs> supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. You were supposed yeah. to be an ambassador of a shitty franchise. Uh -huh. For a while. For the next 10 years. Yeah. For 15, maybe. You know, and now all of a sudden, D'Amico comes in with a good energy. Yeah. And then you get Will Anderson on the defensive mm -hmm, side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, C.J. Stroud becomes the greatest rookie quarterback mm -hmm. in the history of the NFL. But and, that's not normal. Usually these guys suck. And we lost Tank. Yeah. In the middle of the yeah. season, uh -huh. who right. was a game changer mm -hmm. out of U of H. So, I mean, I'm just looking at it right now. I had tweeted this during the season because I'm a huge Caleb Williams guy. Okay. Like, I'm huge on You're that. in L.A. a lot. Uh, yeah, I am three days out the week, but that's him. That's, that's half neither. the year. That's, yeah, that's but, big time. Yeah, yeah but, I, but I, I've been <laughs> watching him, okay? And I tweeted, I said he's the Patrick Mahomes of college when I was watching him play because he's that dynamic. Mm -hmm. To be honest, which I just don't see any other quarterback that's better. Damn, y'all quick. Yeah, that's CD <laughs> Baby back there doing some searching out there. 237,000 views. Uh, people respect your, your yeah. NFL oh, yeah. views as well. That's I mean, a lot. I mean, I don't know if it was respect or just, you know, I don't know what the comment section was saying. <laughs> oh, you think there's a lot of people saying, oh, Park, shut up. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah, you're talking about Carry on. Yeah. <laughs> How'd carry on start? Brilliant. I don't even know. I know you didn't create carry on. I didn't, but it was but just adding like, it in tagline. Yeah, yeah. and I just kind of rolled with it. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, carry on. First time <laughs> I heard you speak and use it, I was like, oh, I like that. Uh -huh. And then it's hard not to start doing it yourself because it is an easy it's catchy. I got to sign off. And you could add, you could add a little bit to it. Like Sauce. you could say, mm -hmm. "Don't mind me" and carry on. <laughs> You could say carry the hell on, right there. You know, so you know what I'm saying. You could mix it up. Yeah, you can sauce it a little. Yeah, kind of mm -hmm. like Bowie Love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we love them. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, a whole new, yep. that's a whole new angle to it. So Drake May has a chance to potentially move up, even though J.J. McCarthy's moving up, Jaden Daniels is moving up. How many spots can you move up to? I'm not 100% sure. Draft night might be absolutely absurd, especially early. It's a good question. Do you think NFL GMs or owners or coaches care about their college record and has it helped because Mahomes, mm -hmm. Mahomes I think, was 500 at Texas Tech and Josh Allen, I think it a, not a losing season at Wyoming, but not the best season. Do you think they? Do you think they care? So my or immediate thought right there is we should Facetime Brandon Bean right now. Yes, and just see what he has to say. But that'd be putting him in a bad spot. But he did take Josh Allen. He did mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. the bad season. And Daniel Jeremiah actually just said yesterday yeah. about Drake May. He said I'm old enough to remember. And he even mentioned Jordan, Jordan Love. Love. Yeah. And, and that's what I was gonna say is like as a Packers fan when you were looking at that stuff and seeing just like his highlights and you look at his stats. It's like, why the hell are they taking this guy? But then a couple years later, you realize, like, oh, well, he was he was like the only guy on his team that got drafted. Do they do that in the NBA draft? Are they drafting for potential, like what they think they could become or what they? I, I think the game is changing now. The game is changing. The first five picks, maybe ten picks, you know, teams may draft for as like potential, but now since the addition of the play-in tournament, mm. it has completely changed the, the, the whole game of the huh. draft. What do you mean? Like, 
because now, you know, you got a, more teams have an opportunity to make the postseason. So those teams that has been knocking at the door, right, they may take a – Better player now. They, they may take a, a, a Herb Jones, right, like that we're seeing a, a three-year college player, right, mm -hmm. that could come in and fit and be a role player, and especially with all these mm. little, Think about this for a second. The game – Hey, has, that's, that's really deep. That's really yeah. deep the, thought. The yeah. game has changed in the NBA because of the new CBA – Right, and you have you know, the uh you know the first the first apron or whatever that is, right? All these rules where you can't have that many max guys mm -hmm. under you know under salary, and so now, you know, these GMs are looking for 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 certain college players that could come in and play right away. That's going to fit cheap too. Right? That has old souls, and they're cheap, right? Yeah, yeah. It, they're not going to be max but, guys. But but let's be honest. Right now, when you think about it. In America, we we're so far behind the eight ball. Like internationals, international players are taking over the game of basketball. Yep. Yep. Period. There's no other way around. Oh, that's a real conversation taking place right now, right? Hell yeah! Like we're playing catch up. Like right now, seven or uh, yeah, seven out of the top ten players are international players. Well, how come? It's because are they like soccer? They have clubs. Well, I, I think it's the development. Mm -hmm. It's the development, right? How they how they are like you know their culture when it comes down to the way that they they train, their, their mindset. And if I'm a GM, and this this a real conversation, if I'm a general manager, and I'm looking at international players and I'm looking at American players, and I'm saying, you know what, I'm gonna take a gamble on this seven footer international player, right? that's skilled or that's athletic. And he may be a raw talent right now, but history has shown us when you look at Giannis Antetokounmpo, when you look at Jokic, when you look at Luka, right, those guys all have something in common. They're married. They show up to work every day. Mm -hmm. They compete at a high level. Gratitude and, probably. And you could trust them. Gratitude probably. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like very you could, you could trust them. We don't, we don't, we're mm -hmm. not reading anything about Jokic and Giannis getting to, you know, altercations or anything outside of the lines. Like, we're not reading anything about those guys. Shea Gillis at uh, SGA from Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. you know, from Canada. Like, these guys are setting a high bar. Wimby. And Wimby, yeah. true professional. Think about Victor Wimby -Yamba. He came on our show and talked about the universe. Yes. Yeah. The, but, but think about it. A rookie with that much height, he goes down the summer league and – when he left Summer League, he could have went anywhere, right? Like, and said, hey, Pop, I'll see you at training camp. He went back to San Antonio, put on 12 pounds of muscle, started working. In, like, that. that's like, this is how he was brought up. Yeah. So we're playing catch up when it comes down to America. It's, awesome. a, it's a wild thought, like, that, you know, because we see the videos – of what those international games are like too, with flares, yeah, and yeah. flags, like soccer teenagers bikes. going yeah. through it, mm -hmm. and it's like. Then we saw. I think I saw the gym that Giannis was training in in yeah. a documentary. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it's like the the gratitude is also, but also the experience of not getting shook. Like we had people throwing fire at us when I was growing yeah. up, 15, 16 year olds. Now you're going into Utah and you got some chirpy Mormon. Yeah. Like that's not that <laughs> big mm -hmm. of a deal. It's like, it is interesting how life experiences can definitely shape how you are and who you are. Work ethic too, another yeah. big massive. They're not saying anybody doesn't have it, but it's yeah. like, feels like if you're trying to get out of things or going through things, you're going to be mature at a lot younger age. That Wemby thing, mm -hmm. when he when we heard him talk about the universe, yeah. all this other shit, we're like, damn, this guy's it, a 90-year-old man. Right. Everybody, everybody in the NBA, you know, in the next three years, they need to go ahead and try to win their defensive player of the year awards, the MVP, <laughs> because they're going to resign in San Antonio with Victor Wembanyama. Mm -hmm. He's going to own that. He's going to be the best player in the league on both sides of the floor. Like in he show, hey, Otani, let's make sure his interpreter and he. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> he, 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 he let's make sure. He, he speaks about eight languages. <laughs> okay, no, that's good. So. That's good news <laughs> yeah. that we won't get caught up in anything. But I do appreciate that OGs are saying this about Wemby, too. Because wasn't there a little bit of a conversation early with him down at Spurs? Like the teammates seemingly were a little bit jealous of maybe Yeah, Wemby? it was like the Luka Doncic situation in Dallas. Like where they had to completely rehaul the team because they weren't really using him as he needed to be used. Well, they and, do that? And I call it short-term memory. Because you got to ask yourself, if you're on Victor Wimbiamba team and you were on the San Antonio Spurs last year, how many televised games did you mm. actually get? 
I think it was two. Yeah, yeah probably. Right? Like, so I understand it. And look, all young fellas go through this where you have these national televised games and they, they, they oh. think it's their moment to actually show the world who they are, right? You got your family members that's tuned in, friends tuned in, whatever. But you always got to go back to say, why do we have these national televised games? Damn it, it is not because of you. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's because of the alien. Yeah. That's the alien it's right there. It's because of him. And it's, and it's the same thing with Luca. Like, you, you need to be appreciating these guys. Doc Rivers had a conversation with me when I was young, and he was, when I was, you know, on that 2008 Celtic team. Hell yeah. And I was getting outside of my damn body, right? Like, I was starting to complain, like, you know, hey, throw me the ball a little bit more. So one morning I come in, he's like, come meet me in my office. He was like, do you know why you starting to get attention? It's not nothing that you're doing. It's that you're fucking playing with Kevin Garnett, <laughs> Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen. Mm -hmm. You need to embrace that and appreciate it. And it was a real thing. Like, it was the truth. Did it click at that moment, or did it take a little bit for it to settle in? No, it clicked. Oh, okay. Yeah, it clicked. He's a good right coach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's oh, a good point. Yeah. Perkins, now Perkins, now that you mentioned yeah. that, yeah. Very I mean, coachable, Perkins. I understand mm -hmm. how this whole thing goes. I appreciate that. You know another person that was supposed to change the entire league, Zion. Mm -hmm. And we always bring up Zion. Yeah. Because we are big Zion fans. Mm -hmm. Actually, whenever you talk about, like, uh, teammates with a young player and everything like that, the first game he – debuted for the Pelicans, they made it a nationally televised game. Mm -hmm. And he was introduced like third or something. So I tweeted, I'm like, why are we introducing this guy third? Okay, He is the reason why the t game is on TV, this whole thing. So they reach out to me. The Pelicans actually go like, we don't want to put too much on his shoulders. It's like, his, there's a there's a mural of him yeah, it's already on happening. the building, literally right across well, the street by the way, from the arena. By the way, do not make enemies with the Pelicans social media. That's not what you want to do. I, I saw mean, Stephen A. did that. Yeah, you do not want to do yeah, that. Yeah, Pelican, <laughs> social, do. Pelican yeah. social media is yeah. actually who reach out. To, like, the Pelican social media were the they one. They give you a warning. Yeah. They are talented. Yeah. Yeah. They are a talented bunch. Yeah. They I, get the internet. Yeah. Did Have you been on the wrong side of the Pelican social media? Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 look, I jumped off the porch one time. I was just, like, disgusted with it. And I was like, you know what? The Pelicans, you know, they, they really need to consider – Selling this franchise, and that was the worst <laughs> three weeks of my damn life. On social media. That was the first time that I actually wanted to delete social media. Yeah, but Zion, wow, so it was made per quit. Yeah. Yeah. Thankful you didn't. Yeah. Thankful yeah. you yeah. didn't. Yeah. Thankful you didn't. But like um, Zion now, best shape of his life. He's dominant. They're playing. That mm -hmm. team could go on a run all of a sudden. They can. They can. They have to get Brandon Ingram back. Mm -hmm. But Zion, what he's been I doing. I love Brandon Ingram's altitude in which yeah. he plays. Mm -hmm. The best. Yes. I like the altitude he plays. Yes, high absolutely. flyer. Yeah. High <laughs> he is a high flyer. <laughs> when, I was down a high there, flyer. when I was down there to intro the team. So they had me come down and intro the team, Perk. Okay, so I do a full intro. Boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom. We're standing on the court beforehand. It was pretty sweet. Like, we were in the middle of warm-ups. And Brandon Ingram walked by, and I looked at him. And the clip, I think, in the video is I look at the camera, I go, that guy's higher than me right now. Yep, that's <laughs> I don't know how that's even possible. And, yep. and then we watched him play the entire game, and it was like yeah, filling up the bucket. Yeah. He, yeah. Was, yeah. he was fantastic. It's smooth to watch. with smooth, it. Smooth Very. with it. But Zion has, since the All-Star break, he's been the most dominant oh, yeah. player in the league, in the paint. He's been go. making love to the paint. That's what you want. Like, brute force, playing with passion, talking noise, confident. Like, this is what you want to see out of Zion. It's amazing. Dropping, <laughs> yeah, dropping 25 pounds. Like, could do for you. Is he yeah. running, like, point forward for them now, too? He is or? the point forward. I think, you know, last night, 10 assists. You know, so he's facilitating. I mean, he's so skilled. But this is the Zion we've been waiting on. So, like, whenever you think about Zion's future, we're thinking the same things we were thinking when he was coming into the league still? What, what this I mean, guy could go on to be... It, the guy. We still only we we've only seen the appetizer of it. Okay, we still need to get the full. Well, let's not meal. do food reference. Yeah. What's well, your deal? We get it. No, Perk. but we I, get first. It. I, I do I do it for myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is, is that we need to see it for an extended period of time. Hell right? Yeah. He still got to win us over. You mm -hmm. got to remember, it was LeBron James, and then it was Zion before Victor. Like mm -hmm. when we talk about greatest prospects. You know, he's supposed to be on that level right now of how we view Anthony Edwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my thing is, like, when Zion was potentially getting pushed out of the league because he was maybe a little bit too big. Sure. Mm -hmm. And the same, uh, Pelicans wouldn't put him on the court. If he, he was a tight end. Oh, my God. In the NFL, he'd be 
so dominant. Now, I think he might eat himself to tackle. Sure. Mm-hmm. But guess what? He would be a tackle. Dominant tackle. Dominant as well. So good. And if he was to eat his way to guard, uh-huh. we're moving exactly. bodies. Yeah. It's like his explosion yeah. doesn't come out of, like, I don't know where it comes from, how many humans have it, but it feels like he's only getting better and more explosive as time goes on with he, his weight loss. He's and one of one. Do you think he's, ha- do you think he's like, experiencing and being like, oh, this is what I can be? Or yeah. do you think there's a chance that we've, we fall back into the... No, 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 no. No, we flipped the switch. Yeah, he's flipped the switch. Huge. Let's go, Zion. Huge. Let's go, Zion. Need that. All right, let's pivot away from the NBA, although we got NBA champion, 14-year NBA vet joining us. Perk, it's great to see you. Yeah. Hell yeah. Best. Great to see you, Perk. Didn't know if the seat would be good enough for 6'10 guy. Mm-hmm. Didn't know if the lighting would be good enough for 6'10 guy. Oh, it's great. Is he good? See, it's great. Is he good? I'm comfortable. Okay. You can't see, but I'm wiggling my toe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like my 11-month-old. I love that. That's all we can tell if she's happy or not whenever she's not making any noise. Joining us now is a man who's the voice of an entire generation for a sport that was maybe dying until a superstar entered it from Japan Ooh. who had an interpreter that was seemingly taking advantage of him. Mm-hmm. Our baseball guru, live from an office in Bristol, Connecticut. Ladies and gentlemen, Jet Passon. Yeah! 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 Gentlemen, oh, how are you? Is that a Mike Holy Foss shit. jersey? With a oh. captain patch? Listen, listen. You think he framed this accidentally? You think my shot is where it is uh, like, <laughs> just by happenstance? This no, he awesome. wanted his name right there. I don't blame him. I don't you're blame in him it, at all. What, you're in his office right now? I'm in his office right now because you guys couldn't get your shit together in time to to get me an oh, actual shot. You guys, I don't know if that's on our end. We'll just assume it is just because saying. we'll try to be nice, but feels like there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen up there in Bristol, potentially on their end too. But Swing. let's um let's keep the conversation going here. And although Foss was a prolific MLS player. Yeah, he was. One of the greatest scorers they've ever seen. Well, I don't think he was a goal scorer, but I understand what you're saying. He was one of the greatest runners of all time. Sure. Uh, speed, <laughs> back in the yeah, floor. A lot uh, of speed. Yeah, he's he's on your ass like back pockets, as right. yeah. a wizard once said in the entire <laughs> thing. Uh, but passing, we got big opening night here in America. Yes. Uh, opening day was opening morning in Korea uh, last week with massive news coming out of that with Shohei and obviously Ipe Mitsuhara. What should we be looking at this evening that isn't a gambling-related story in the MLB? I mean, I love the Houston Astros-New York Yankees matchup right there. Uh, the, the slate sort of starts at 3 o'clock now because a couple of rainouts earlier in the day. And, and I'm not trying to be company man here, but the Texas Rangers won the World Series last year, and they're going to be starting their season against the Chicago Cubs. And it's, it's starting a season that I, I think it's going to be really interesting because we've got these two teams in the Atlanta Braves and the Los Angeles Dodgers that that really are like the cream of the crop in the league. They have the highest projected win totals. They look like they are going to be the best teams on paper. With the Dodgers, you've got the Otani situation that's going to be hanging over them What's all that? Day long. What's the situation? What's the situation? Just as a ref- uh, the, the situation is Shohei Otani alleged that his interpreter, Ipe Mitsuhara, stole four and a half million dollars from him to cover gambling debts. That is his story. What? We do not have the full story or the confirmed story at this point, but that is what Shohei Otani came out oh. during uh, a media availability to tell the world that he is sticking with. And he's still going to be able to hit the ball and throw the ball, but he's not pitching this year, right? Not pitching this year? Correct. He had, it wasn't Tommy John surgery necessarily. It was an elbow procedure, though. That's going to be keeping him out for the year pitching. So he's going to be the designated hitter all year long for the Dodgers. And He's playing you know, DH? Not- oh, yeah. That's oh, a yeah. lot of time in that bullpen thinking about how much money was stolen from him. <laughs> yeah, true. We're not in the bullpen. A lot and, uh, of time on the bench. Out. Dug out. Yeah. He's, he's going to be, you know, uh, Tim Kirchin, who is, uh, I think, the voice of baseball and the soul of Thank baseball. Thank you, Jeff. That's very, very nice. Tim Kirchin is the voice of baseball, and he will be until the end of the time. He's <laughs> here. Can you I, keep going, Ty? I didn't know he was here. I, 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 I just want to listen to it. I know I did, but that's why we love him. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, Tim Kirchin, sorry. <laughs> So Kirkchin's been covering the game for, you know, 40 plus years now. And when we were on baseball tonight yesterday, he said he thinks that Mookie Betts 
Shohei Otani and Freddie Freeman is the best top three of any lineup in the history of the game. Whoa. And if Tim Kirkland's saying something, like, you listen to it, because that man knows his history better than anyone. All right, so I'm betting on the Dodgers. I hope Shohei is, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not that he gambles on baseball or at all. Right. But there's a lot going on over there. If he's able to remain mentally tough enough to keep a federal investigation, an MLB investigation, a trader within your own camp, yeah. and still hit a baseball that's coming in, which is a matter of like centimeters mm -hmm. of being an out or being a home run. You're talking about a real cerebral, you're talking... Assassin. Yeah. No, you know what though? That, that's like a that, hungover that, flu that, game. That is what he has done his entire career. Think about it. He came to Major League Baseball six years ago with the idea that he was going to be the first player since Babe Ruth in MLB to try hitting and pitching at the same time. And not only did he go out and do it, he won two MVPs in the process. He redefined a position in the sport. He created one. Like, two-way player was something that nobody thought was possible. So the idea that he doesn't have the fortitude when he's got 50 people trailing him every day already mm. from Japan who are reporting every little tiny minuscule thing that he does back to their home country because that is how voracious the appetite is for Shohei Otani content there. Like the guy already knows what it's like to laser focus, to put the blinders on, and to to just concern himself with baseball. And that's what he's going to have to do this year, because you're right. This is the kind of thing that's going to linger for a long time. How about all this superstardom since whenever teenager years has prepared him for a moment of a United States federal investigation mm -hmm. happening at the same exact time as the season starts? Oh, yeah. It gets announced the same exact day the season starts. It's like, good luck. Just sign the biggest contract. You're a D you're the biggest star for this entire season now. You either have to deal with the fact that somebody that was in your life and was your ears and your mouth completely screwed you over. Mm -hmm. Just completely preyed on you, took advantage of you, stole your money, lied to you. What else were they lying about? I mean, who knows? If this is happening, what else is going on? That's what he's alleging, which is terrible to have to deal with personally and obviously financially. Or the complete opposite, where... A lot of people on the internet immediately think he was gambling. He's got to have a fear that they're going to find out about something that he did the entire time. Nonetheless, his entire life being stalked better yeah. has almost prepared him to be able to just keep everything out. That's mm -hmm. wild. If he has a good year this year. He will. That's bananas will. to think about. That is because how inside your own ears baseball is. That is a wild. Good luck, Shohei. Okay, okay. Unless you bet on baseball, then... <laughs> Go to hell, Shohei, if you're trying to ruin the integrity of the game that we love. Right. But everything we're being told is he did not gamble on baseball. Yep. No. Yep. Or the interpreter did not gamble on baseball, which is the biggest news of the entire mm -hmm. story. Tone Diggs has a question for you with a pirate shirt on. Yeah, I do. We're very excited for the Buccos this year. I mean, O'Neill Cruz hit about 30 home runs this spring, which was very exciting. And then our guy, Paul Skeens, was putting 102 on the black basically every pitch. My question for you is, here in Indianapolis, how many games, how many days am I going to go get to see Paul Skeens here in Indy before he gets called up to the Buccos? Because I think there's like a, what is it, 15 games or 15 day where we can steal a, a, a back end year on the contract. What's going on with Paul? Let's not screw over Paul. Paul. No, I already no. tried. Just, no, that's just baseball. That's what they do. It's Pittsburgh Pirates baseball is what it sounds like. Watch your mouth. Red Sox good. Nobody knows a single player on your team. Bra sure. Brain <laughs> Bellow is about to be Sorry. the side. Sorry young. about that, Jet. Just Paul Skeens is who we need to talk about here. I was hoping we were going to get to talk about the Pirates because yes. I got to say, fellas, they're starting to get a little interesting. Yeah, they yeah. are, Jet. Would, we're playing baseball. Uh, and that's why we love I would, them. I would make sure to go and see if Paul Skeen start in April okay. because I'm not sure he's going to be there by the time May comes around. Right. Hey. And, and beyond that, you know, he's not the only guy going out throwing 100. Jared Jones made the Pirates roster. Yeah. And he's he been did, hitting around 100 all spring. You add those. Yeah, we got two, the Hundo boys. We get it. Yeah. Come see the Pirates and the Hundo boys make a run <laughs> into October. Is that what we're talking about here? Yes. I don't know if we're there yet. They they need listen. They need O'Neill Cruz to stay healthy and hit forty home runs this season. Both of which I think he is stop capable driving. of doing. Chapman, they need stop Brian honking. Hayes to go and and be the best version of himself. He's getting Old into love. his prime right now. They need Brian Reynolds to come back and be that four or five win player that he's been in the past. <laughs> that, that might have been down the line. Fouling off. Yeah. Might have been down that the line. That was soft contact, McAfee.
<laughs> soft. It was off speed. It was off speed. Soft, McAfee. People hit home runs off change-ups. Don't you get What's three strikes? Excuse? Sorry. Okay? <laughs> I fouled off one. He fought one off. We fouled one off. Sorry about it. Okay? Oh, what? Yeah, sorry you were fighting off a 12-mile-per-hour suck. Well, you didn't get to, your eyes are messed up from that office you're sitting in. So much greatness is kind of maybe becoming a fog. Okay, you didn't okay, see Okay, let's see it, Ben. Come on. Let's see it. I mean, it was a knuckleball. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. wow. That was a curveball. Oh, two. Oh, two. Oh, two. Oh, two. Oh, two. Oh, two. Yep, two. So I got a chance. Uh, Park's got a question for you, Jet. Come on, boy. Come on. Boy. Jeff, what's going on, man? Big fan. Appreciate everything you do. Is that false? Is that false? Mike Foss is the, uh, you know, the younger looking fella. Cool tats. Do you, do you know that, you know, Mike Foss, when I started my media career, he was with me at Hoop Streams? Like, no. yeah, we set records. We said, ask him about it. We set records. Yeah. I will ask. He's senior yeah. vice president. Yeah. He's SVP. Yeah, we said, no, we set record numbers. But look, this is not about me and Foss right now. <laughs> I need you to hey, keep. Hey, congrats to you and Foss. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, with the hoop strings. Yeah. So I need you to tell me or give me life about my Houston Astros. Yeah. Okay. I need. I need oh, Cheaters, right? Yeah, oh. big time. Still. You guys cheated. Uh, that was way. Why are you Hurt's bringing up the fight you. No, I'm just telling you what happened. That garbage guy. Exoskeleton. Yeah, they had the. <laughs> bzz, bzz, yep. bzz, that was on their chest. Yep. Like, Who did we just meet? We just met somebody that was on the Astros. Was that. Um, was that uh, was that one of the Raws? I just met a guy. Oh, yeah. Was that Monday Night Raw the uh, other day? Uh, Remember the Astros? Shook his hand. I said, oh, so you guys did have the. Yep. Right? As soon as I said hello, nice to meet you, man. Good handshake. I said, Jet Pass and said, You guys didn't wear you the. Guys cheated, yeah. You guys didn't wear the little thing that kind of told you, but you guys did, right? And he goes, Just a trash. Can. Come on. Just a trash. Can. Just All right, trash. Right, I got to go call Raw, but yeah. nice meeting you. Congrats <laughs> on championship. You're reporting on the Astros. I think Astros fans use all the time, and also MLB people do. You're down in the weeds of it. Did they die after that whole cheating scan, or are they still a good team? Yes. Because. What? They did not They won die. a World Series. Yeah, yeah. they did not die. Did. What? Won it all. Come this on, is like man. a Patriots type situation? Yeah, on, very yeah. similar. Yeah. When everybody said you can't win because you cheat and then they go win the next yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. Win the Watch this draft. Yeah. Yeah. They've, been to, they've been to seven straight American League <clears throat> Championship Series. Talk to them. Like, very good. Talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Perk, your Astros are going to be good again this year. That Their pitching's kind of banged up right now. Uh -oh. Justin Verlander oh, really? to start the year on the injured list. Uh-oh! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Luis Garcia, uh, Lance McCullers Jr., Jose Arquiti, like... They've got some work to do when it comes to getting pitchers healthy, but they've still got Jordan Alvarez, who's one of the best hitters in the world. They've still got Kyle Tucker, who's one of the best players in the world. Jose Altuve is still around. Alex Bregman going to be a free agent after this season. He's still there as well. The the, the American oh, League. Oh, there you go. There we oh. go. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Go for walk off. <laughs> Good swing, good hack, good hack, good hack. There we go, boy. One nothing, one nothing. I like you did you did a hot dog around the base either. That was good. That was good trot. Good pace. There's more coming. Act like you've been here before. Yeah. All right, I'm done. I'm yeah, done on the Astros. Next, <laughs> Ty's got a question for you. Yeah, Jet, you mentioned Yankees Astros today, and Astros obviously have been a crawl in the side of Yankees fans for quite some time now. Uh, I just need give me realistic expectations because I am I'm prepared to burn the Bronx down if we have another season like we did last <laughs> year. And then also uh, sticking in the AL East, do you think the Orioles are going to be kind of that like? D-backs team this year that kind of comes out of nowhere, surprises a lot of people. Obviously, they made the playoffs last year, but actually, you know, like kind of dominates the East and maybe goes to the World Series. Ty, they won 101 games last year. Very they good, not I know. The East last year. Well, yeah. Like, they, the, the Orioles are what you wish the Yankees were. Wow. Whoa. Mm. Wow. Whoa. I mean, is that true? <laughs> I mean, yeah, with the, all the young talent, I think you could make that argument. Wow, sure. the Yankees sucks. They don't. They don't. 
I don't. That's what he just said. Tell him, Jet. Tell him. <laughs> he just said. He just said no, I'm not going to say. I'm not yeah. going to say that they suck, but I, it wouldn't shock me at all if they don't make the playoffs. Oh, oh my oh. God! <laughs> oh, rise! I heard Judge was the guy. You guys aren't even making the playoffs. Well, that's the thing. If, he is. If Judge stays healthy and if Soto's out there, like they may score 15 runs a game by just pitching. He, Jeff said, "Yeah, I didn't say that they suck, but I also didn't say that they were good." <laughs> yeah. Hurt your heart too. Yeah. Hurt you. you. I know. When you lose Little Garrett boots. Cole, Garrett mm. Cole's out for the first two months of the season. He's oh, the best pitcher no. in baseball. When you lose Spence. Garrett Cole for at least two months and you don't know what you're going to get when he's coming back, how good do you feel, Ty, about that rotation right now? Are you confident in Nestor Cortez? Are you confident in Marcus Stroman? Are you confident in Carlos Redon? Are you confident in Clark Schmidt or Luis Heal? Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, not great. Uh, Clark Schmidt stuff yeah. looks pretty good, but I mean, it, it's it Rodon. Obviously, he needs to have a bounce back year. Nestor, you're just looking for, hey, can you give can you give us four or five good innings? But I don't know if that's good enough to win a pennant. You know, the thing with me and the Yankees is I wonder about their age and I wonder about the durability. Aaron Judge is playing center field this year. Yep. It's not easy to play center field really? for anyone. It's really not easy to play center field for a guy who's six foot eight and 275. Nah, it's a no-fly zone now. It's a yeah. no-fly zone out there. That's what I heard. That's what the boys are calling themselves. No-fly zone. Thanks, Pat. They still um, playing 162 <laughs> games this year or no? Still playing 162 games this year. Is that not too many? Is that too not? Is that not too many, Jed? I mean, are we ever going to reconsider? It's, it's 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 a lot of games. It's a lot of games, and there's there's a not insignificant portion of people in Major League Baseball who wish it were like 140 or 145, and that they could get some off days in there. But once you're at 162, owners aren't going to turn their backs on yeah. the revenue that, that comes with all those games. So I, yeah. putting the toothpaste back in the tube there is unlikely. What's the big story? Whenever these 162 games are over for everybody, what's the big story going to be you're predicting here on opening day? I, you know, I think in the National League, it's going to be Dodgers and Braves. Uh, you have these two super teams that have been assembled, and it's almost like we're just waiting for the inevitability of them being in the postseason and facing off against one another. But then last year, Dodgers go and get swept by the Diamondbacks, yeah. and uh, the, the Braves get knocked out by the Phillies again. So the, the nature of the baseball playoffs is so interesting to me. It's the, it's the sport that has a postseason that least reflects its regular season. Like, you don't see a whole lot of Cinderella's going to the Super Bowl, right? You don't see a whole lot of Cinderella's making the NBA Finals. The last three years, the team with the worst record in a league has made the World Series among the playoff teams. Like, the worst record among the playoff teams has made it all the way to the World Series. So, it, it shows you in baseball, like, all it takes is getting hot for a month and so a team like the Dodgers that should win 100 games this year and like the Braves, who I think could win 105 plus games this year, doesn't matter if you don't pitch in October, if you don't hit in October, then it's just a it's a lost season. It's a it's a, a what could have been. And that's what all these teams, I think the Phillies included, since they still haven't won one despite World Series in 22, NLCS in 23, um, you know, they're in that role where it's World Series or bust as well. I can't wait to watch at least five of these games. Well, you know, this hey, season. You yeah, watch more. At least, when, at when least five. Skeens comes up, five. Yeah. When Skeens five. comes up, you're going to watch ev uh, not every start. You're going to watch a lot of Paul Skeens starts this year. Oh, yeah. Every you're clip. See him, mm. Like you said, <laughs> like you said, 102 on the black. Livy Dunn's going to be at the game. You're going to be excited about that. Like, it's going to be a good time. We hope they're able to survive 162 game season. That's mm -hmm. a lot on a relationship, but I think they There's do love each other and we're happy for it. True love. But if I do see, <laughs> relax, Bert. When I do see a clip of him with his towering presence oh, yeah. on that mount, and then I hear that shotgun boom, mm -hmm. and then the mustache rattles alongside of it, yeah, I might turn the game on. I might. You're right. Paul Skeens right. will get me into baseball. So, Pirates, let's get the hundo boys mm -hmm. rolling at the top of the lineup. Let's do this thing. Cool. <laughs> All right. All right, Jeff. We appreciate you, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Pass. 162 games, I don't know how you guys do it. I, you, you guys got a shit ton, too. How many? 82. 82. That's so many games. Yeah, it is. I mean, but that's what you saw. Hold on, you're an old school guy. You're an old school guy, I assume. With this whole, hey, uh, 
management, man, yeah, load, load management, management and stuff I like hate that. it. So I Charles Barkley's been like very openly loud against it. A lot of the OGs mm -hmm. have been openly loud against it. Like you, you we know used what? to go, we used to like actually drink the night before yeah. and then like yeah. go play yeah. another that forty minutes the next night. But you know why? Because you're disrespecting the greats that paved the way for you. Okay, that's how you guys feel. Yeah, the, the I mean, but that's a real thing. It's not how we feel. It's actual. It's facts. So you think about what Larry Bird and Magic Johnson and Isaiah Thomas and, you know, what they did for the game of basketball and what they was getting paid, right? Those guys were available. Hell, Larry Bird dropped, what, 40-plus with his left hand? Yeah, he was he had so, so you think about when they passed the torch down to, like, you know, Jordan and, and Ewan and John Stockton and all these guys, right? They were available. They played. The salaries went up. And then they passed the torch down to Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, mm -hmm. right? They were available. They played. They fucking played. They were getting paid top dollars, yep. right? Mm -hmm. The salaries goes up even more. Now, they passed the torch down to this generation, right? Now, all of a sudden, you got guys sitting out. All of a sudden, you got guys forcing their way out. And it's doing a disservice to the guys that's coming up underneath them. And also the future of the game is what you're yeah, saying. Absolutely. Because all the guys being available is what raised the ratings, yeah. which raised the money, which raised the salary cap, which raises the life. So I was I was preaching when all this like Ben Simmons nonsense, right. wanting to get out of Philly, James Harden forcing his way out of uh Houston and then forcing his way out of Brooklyn. And, then, and I and I huh? And then really? forcing his way out of Philly. Exactly. <laughs> right. So I was like, the owners are gonna be waiting on them at the front door. Now all of a sudden, new rules come into play. And it's gonna continue to hurt the pockets of the NBA players when so many greats put their bodies on the line and they weren't getting paid close to what guys are getting paid now. Four fucks. That would be the fifth one yep. on this particular the, show. Four the, from you, one from you. One four to one. Yeah, yeah one, yeah, one out. It was out. genuine, yeah. though. Hey, it was only a half. It was only a half, yeah. Yeah, it only it, a half it, one. It, it, must have, it was like a solid fart. Yeah, kind yeah. of. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that might have been. That might, that might have been. That might have been what it was. Uh, go ahead, Connor. I mean, everything you just said is why LeBron's the goat. Like it really is. And I'm a, I'm, I'm a person from Massachusetts, and everyone hates LeBron in Massachusetts. But like, it's, it's undeniable. He still plays 82 games. So let's talk about that because he talked about that on Mind of the Game or yeah. Mind mm -hmm. of Game podcast with JJ Redick about couple stats that he learns about himself whenever he reads it on the internet and how long he's been playing and how the body feels. Here's him and JJ on Mind the Game podcast brought to you by Uninterrupted and 342 Productions. Are you able to, to do that on a nightly basis, though? Like, take that, that matchup. <sighs> it's asking and, and, a lot, LeBron. And, and, and <laughs> it's asking a lot. At 39, with, with, I think I saw it the other day. I think I have like 70,000 minutes. I was, I was explaining to my wife the other day. She asked me, how am I feeling when I came home after a game? I said, babe, just imagine buying a 2003 Escalade and it's 2024 and you never changed the tires. <clears throat> wow. So rub my feet, please. <laughs> 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 and I've never changed the tires. These are the same tires from 2003. So can I do it every night? I don't want to say I could do it for a whole game. I mean, I can't. I'll take the challenge for sure. But that's just I'm a competitor. Yeah. I was born that way. I was taught that way. I'll die on the court because I just love it so much. Am I, am I being realistic? I got to pick my spots. Definitely got to pick my spots. So he was talking about playing defense, I believe, <laughs> on somebody for an entire game because obviously you're running a lot mm -hmm. on the defensive side when you're trying to keep up with somebody. Uh, Savannah and LeBron, incredible relationship. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Love the way they, you know, they've handled this entire thing. Rub my feet, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, listen, Savannah, did, hey, that's hey, they're in love. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's right. yeah. They're in love. This is, that's just a great marriage. I think she's coming out on. Uh, well, I mean, that's not how everybody would view that, but like, uh, she's coming out with a podcast, I believe, as yep. well, and she said like, hey, for. The kids that grow up with dad, it's been my, with what LeBron has been able to do. I think those two are a cool couple. They are. Yeah. Like, that's they a cool are. couple looking from outside in. Now that we've addressed that fact, 70,000 minutes, 
with how long he's been in the league, being able to do what he did. Last night he did like an oop where he went up and flew. It, and we'll see highlights every other day here in year 20, whatever, where he's just taking off on people. It's like obviously he's a freak athlete. Mm -hmm. And like doing this at his age, 70,000 minutes in is absurd. The no new tires thing is like he changed your shoes. We think you're more talking like rims, whatever the case. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, the feet don't get talked about a lot. Now for corners – wide receivers, and a couple other high-speed got-to-cut-on-a-dime positions in the NFL. It gets chatted about by ex-players, but not really nationally. For him talking about the feet, I assume that gets you, because you're big-ass dudes, too, mm -hmm. and you're on wood, which is not, like, the softest. Is that taking anybody down? Is that something that is monitored well, while you're in the league? Well, I mean, you have orthotics, right? Like, you know, custom orthotics, you know, that you get uh, Dr. Scholl. doing Dr. training. Because, like, you're, you're six foot what? I'm 6'9", but I, I'm 6'10 when I got two pairs of socks. You look damn near. Yeah, okay, yeah. so 6'11", so, we put three pairs of socks yeah. on. Yeah. But, but you know what? I'm glad the world is able to see this version of LeBron James because I can't you know, express how many times I have been in a steakhouse with him. And all you got to do is slide him a glass of wine and you go get this version of LeBron James, right? He's going to tell you, you know, the stories. He's going to break down the game. And, I mean, he's one of the best to ever do it and has one of the highest IQ when it comes to basketball that I've been around. Now, when it comes to taking care of those tires, yeah, right, Okay. it doesn't surprise me, right, because I played with LeBron James when I was 16, AU Oakland Soldiers, and I actually watched him train himself for these moments. Now, did I think he was going to be 21 years in? No, but I did think he was going to dominate for 15, 16 years. While we was at AAU tournaments, we're eating cheeseburgers from McDonald's or what, quarter pounders or whatever. He's eating fruit. So he had already started training himself for this journey. Like at 16 years old, he was going to media training. This is, this is no, you know, a story that somebody told me. This is something that I watched with my own two eyes. So when I hear these stories and when he bring up Savannah, I'm like, yeah, you might have been the tires, and these are your tires on the Escalade, but you can't move without that rim. And you know who's that rim been? It's been Savannah, mm -hmm. right? Hell. You can't drive a car with just rims with no tires, and you definitely can't drive a car with tires with no rims. Well, She's I saw a guy the, the other night, he did a hit and run, lost his tire. Yeah, yeah. He, he was in right. LA. He, was he right got rims. three blocks. Yeah, he kept and going. And he even turned with one. Oh, yeah. 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 I saw it on the internet. You're going to see this, but you're 100% right. And they've been a great tag team, uh, I think. And what we're seeing, Bronny and Bryce and the entire family is obviously fantastic. Mm -hmm. But 21 years in, it feels like he's still moving just as fast as everybody I mean, else. Oh, yeah. And it's, and it's not a game. Like, literally, you will see this man. He moves like the president, okay? he Everything is, is planned out. You could be at dinner with him. He's getting treatment, right? He has one of the best guys to do it. And my guy, Mike, who is his right-hand man when it comes down to this, he invested so much time. He sacrificed so much into his body. It doesn't surprise me. I love how much he loves his sport. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, he loves basketball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that Mind the Game pod is showcasing that and his basketball IQ. And mm -hmm. he's saying a lot of shit that I don't understand. Nope. He's talking about they got the clips on the clip. But, yeah, but, but Pat, huge. we got we, – look, fellas, we got the court. If you don't understand something, I could teach it to you. Oh, you. Okay. we got a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. We, I could we, teach. I could teach you the X out on the weak side. I yeah. could teach you the multiple actions. Any clip that, yeah, all it. It's, it's not necessarily about the bounce pass or the no look. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes. I want to learn about. Yeah. All right, hour two will be on the other side of this break. AJ Hawk will join us. Perks out of Fox, but we'll see if there are any more to show up in the next hour. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change our life. T Pain is an absolute weapon. What's the song? Would I, Chuck, would I heard I you in the shower today. You were listening. No, I'm in love with the stripper. Yeah. Oh, that's him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's I can take you to a mansion somewhere, somewhere in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. That's him as well. That was him and Jay, too. Wisconsin? Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, you got to make it. You got to make that's it. That's music. Yeah. They say he deserves an award for r rhyming that together. Yeah, that's actually one of the greatest bars in the history mm -hmm. of music days. He didn't do It's Hard Out Here for a Pimp, did he? No, no. I think that was way before Ted Payne became a uh, but, but good pull. A musical. You know, it's hard I, out here for a pimp. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I'll play that. Money yeah. Three, six. With the Cadillac and gas money spent, mm. you have a whole lot of bitches jumping shit. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. He's a jumping Dan Rolofsky. Hey, oh, Dan. Oh, Dan. Oh, Dan. Oh, Do you remember oh, when?
when you said, uh, do you remember when you said Mac Jones could do exactly what Brock Purdy's doing out there? Was yep. that what started the entire kind of <laughs> Brock Purdy is, uh, 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 JJ, we're getting good close look on JJ. A big head. Was I'm excited you, to hear this. Was it you, Dan? Was it? Do we think it was you or who do we think it was that started the whole Brock Purdy is not good at football thing? I think it was you. No, no. We know, actually. Dude, I say, I, I can't sing you again. <laughs> Keep the hot takes coming, bud. Keep no. the hot takes coming. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Just keep JJ. doing Dan Orlovsky JJ. stuff. We, that haircut. We're lucky. We are very lucky for you, Dan Orlovsky. Hair does look great. Ty, you had a hell of a performance last night. You sounded a siren. Yeah, Obviously, right. you started the party. You were on the ice at one point. Hold my twin three one. I'm going to be out here for fucking 35 minutes, going five miles an hour in a circle, just... Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Wait, is that Ty Schmidt from the Pat McAfee Show? What a thrill. Are you kidding me? Right around on the ice for fucking 25 minutes, two miles an hour. Nothing better, dude. Nothing better. And you would think, like, okay, he started the game. He kept the ice fresh for the boys. What? That's got to be all a super fan night is, right? No, no. Then he got the sword in, uh, in the shield, yep. and that went about as bad as it possibly could. <laughs> I did exactly what the Golden Knight told me to do. No, you no, I'll you be honest. <laughs> It was after he banged on that shield. 15 seconds later, they get the go-ahead goal. Ty got to give fist bumps to the boys as they were going to the locker room. And then we got a chance to go in the locker room afterwards and talk to the boys. Where'd you get 66? The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this sweet perk Thursday, March 28, 2024. Hour two of the program starts now. Sport! Are happening. One particular sport or competition we're enjoying watching right now is Perk versus Earpiece. Uh, can we get it in? Here we go. The six foot ten man's ear. ZD Baby out to help the talks tables here at Boston Connor and Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Da -da. Cowboys to take this ear. <laughs> 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 Zito has disappeared behind this man. If you're looking at the camera right now, a uh, guy who has brought nothing but electricity since the moment he stepped foot in this Thunderdome. Yep. A 14 year NBA vet, an NBA champion, a man who can handle earbuds with no problem at all. One. Big Park Kendrick Perkins. Hey. Hey, that's ZD, baby. ZD's always hey, got your back. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I, I, I got to, you know what I'm saying? You know what? The, hospita the hospitality has been excellent all across the board. Mm -hmm. You have time for a story. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, absolutely. So my ride here, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Getting the Uber, I'm like, damn it. I forgot my black T-shirt to go under my jacket. So we pull over to like three gas stations. <laughs> Cause I'm about to go get one, you know, Absolutely. for like four dollars. Yeah, 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 nothing like it. Yeah, I love it. Then they didn't have my size, right? They had a V neck. I'm that's like, bad. ah, I can't really rock the V neck. I don't really want to show, show too much chest hair, you know. That's for the wife to see, right at sure. night. Sure, sure. Yeah. So we pull in the city gear. I hop out. I go in the city gear. Oh yeah. They got the classics, pro clubs, 
4X Pro Club. Boom. You know what I mean? <laughs> the Colts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. City Gear, they uh, they teamed up with the uh, Colts, actually. Oh, okay. they, they got a bunch yeah. of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, they had big perk size. Uh, pro Clubs. <laughs> when you walked in, they, they, knew, they knew you when you walked in? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they did. A lot and of Celtics fans. Yeah, you're six foot ten. Right. I mean, yeah. So immediately, you're somebody. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I had on my, my airport attire, which is a sweatsuit with Crocs. Look good. You look you know sweet. Yeah. yeah. Look Th- sweet. thought with that's walk. what you were yeah. going with yeah, on sweat, the show. Yeah, sweat, you know, sweatsuits with Crocs. That's my go-to move. Hey, why is your ring finger pointing at me when you're... It, it's a battle wound. Look at this. Hey, it, look, uh, look it's at a that. Ba- it still works. Look at that thing. I mean, it doesn't work. It's a it's war. A claw. It's, yeah, it it's, does look like the, the video arcade a, game claw. Yeah, yeah. It's a war wound. The guy from Scary Movie. A lot too. of basketball the, hands yeah, messed the, up, right? This is a memory. You're, You're right. right. Yeah. A story. I, this, yeah, this is like a, you know, a trophy. How many, a lot of basketball fingers are going the wrong direction? Hell yeah. Because we got what? Because in NFL, it's uh, like linebackers, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, because fingers get in jerseys. Yep. And then I kind of see you later. It's the same with basketball. And then you got to think guys blocking shots, you know, you may hit your hit your uh, finger on the, on the backboard. Yeah. Right? You may get your finger tangled up in the net or in the rim. We oh. saw Anthony Edwards dislocate. Mm-hmm. Oh. Damn, y'all quick. Yeah, we're watching you do your thing here. Great block. Oh, suck it, Kevin Love. I mean, it used to be real. Rondo. Rondo. Rondo was so awesome. Oh. You guys the, used to have a good time, this team, and good good chemistry? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Yeah, you guys enjoy you, playing with each other? I told you the story. Yep. Yeah. I told you guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's this team. Yeah. The motto used to be fantastic. <laughs> Ooh. They still, put this team, they still put this team in 2K. As they should. Yeah. Oh, 2008 Celtics, you can play as them. What are you, a 99? Yep. Better be perk after what I'm watching. Yes, some he of these is. highlights right here. A little touch <laughs> under the rim here from the big man. Behind oh. the back from Rondo. Up and under, scoop, spin, glass, and one. Yeah, I owe that to the Mike and Drew. Get that out of here, Hell bro. Yeah. LeBron, block on Braun. Ah, Got him. You're done with it. Ooh. Ooh it's it's possible. So Especially whenever you're doing that type of thing. One of the bats. most underrated players. Passers to yep. ever play the game. And also, I'm one of the most underrated people to ever speak into a microphone. Oh, Amen. I uh, anytime I see a KG clip, I am stopping and I am listening. Incredible actor as well. Great. Yeah. When he was in that uh, Emerald Uncut Gem. Gems. Gems. There it is. There it is, that yeah, one. Yeah, y'all need to bring them on. KG, we, we yeah. have sent requests. We you have sent requests. You didn't talk to me about it. Well, wow. okay, you're right. Like, who yeah. are you, who are you right, sending requests to? Well, I you know mean, what I mean? Peoples, I guess. It's his I mean, Per could I am his first goal call. We're sending a guy to a rich. A rich is what we were just told. A man named Rich. Yeah. His name. Rich Gray. Yep, that's the man. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. his deal? Rich Gray don't no, like no, white no, people? No, no, no. It's not Rich Gray. Rich Gray don't like white people? No, no, no. It's oh. not Rich Gray. No, no, no. I just got to pull up on KG ass. Okay, well, I don't. Tell him we need to make this move. Hey, listen. We don't need you to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> we would be honored to talk to KG. <laughs> yeah. That would be something. We're big fans. Anytime he's speaking, we listen. Yeah. Also, Paul Pierce. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big fan, Paul Pierce. Yeah. Both of them play. Love the way he operates. He seemingly gives less shits than anybody that I've ever encountered. Yeah. And I love that. You know, like I, everything he does, he seemingly like goes, oh, who cares to? You know what I mean? Like whenever he was at his card game, uh-huh. luck, you know, yep, seems yep. like he's got a, he hosts a great card game. The live mm-hmm. stream with like, KG. Boom. Yeah. We are live right now, KG. So, what are you talking No, we are. And then he finds out <laughs> an hour and a half in. Yep. We're live right now? You know what, Paul? He lives his life one foot in the grave and the other on the banana peel. <laughs> okay. That's, the best, way to, that's okay. the best way to live life. That's wow. why we love him. Yeah. And that's that why we love him. <laughs> I mean, that is awesome. Joining us now is a man who has similar fingers to you, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the president of Ohio, A.J. Hawk. Yeah. Oh, fresh haircut. You look good. Hey, fresh haircut nice. looks good. Oh, fresh haircut looks good. It. Post Jamaica. Got a little glow. <laughs> got some new teeth. Wow. Get a nice yes. haircut. Right. Hey, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's oh, go. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sex Trying to look like Perk, man. Perk looks amazing. I can't believe you got the 4X shirt on the way into the Thunderdome. Yeah, Pro Club. Pro Club. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Yeah. Pro Club. Shout out Pro Club. Hey, shout out to Indianapolis. Yeah. 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 City Gear. Way to pull through for old Perk there. And when he walks in. Holy shit, it's Catcher Perk. It's everybody right away. So we have no idea. We like you said I'm at the door. Your car must have snuck in behind. No, him. no, no. I actually seen my Bostonian brother going mm-hmm. out and getting his Uber Eats. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was is. in the car. I was in the car trying to figure out the cash app thing to pay my driver mm-hmm. or whatever, because he was like, he was a good driver. He actually, you know, flipped me around town. I seen you get your Uber Eats, and I'm like, okay, boom. I tried so to you open. do Uber Eats? 
No, I'd, no, I'd. <laughs> no, I'm serious. DoorDash is like where you're at. Because there's some places I've been where the DoorDash yeah, no, not yeah, is not it. as prolific <laughs> as other places. Then there's some places where Uber Eats is. Let me explain something. My <laughs> wife is from Southeast Texas, and my mother-in-law is from Southeast Texas. I'd be damned if I'm doing Uber Eats. Oh, what's that mean? We're cooking? Oh, they cooking in my crib. What are we eating? What are we eating? What are we eating? I mean, you know, we got we got we got oxtails, you know what I mean? We go we go have That's Jamaican, right? Huh? Oxtail, isn't that is that's big Jamaican? It depends food? on how you cook it. You know what I mean? It depends on how you cook it. We doing oxtails, we doing, you know, macaroni and cheese. What was that thing on the internet the other day that said uh, you're not black if you haven't eaten this? It looked like an uh, arm. Lamar Jackson quote tweeted it. It was, uh, oh, it, was, yeah. it was definitely like a gator or something. Oh, gator. Yeah. Gator, gator arm. Yeah, that's, I mean, we eat fried gator. We don't eat the gr the gator on, but we eat gator bite. I don't think I've, have I ever had gator? Gator's in delicious. In New Orleans, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, it's just like a juicy. It's, it tastes like crab. chicken, kind of. It's like chicken. Yeah, it's like chicken. Yeah. Like fried, uh, fried chicken. chicken. Yeah. But isn't everything kind of like fried chicken if you... Yeah. <laughs> yep. Right? Yeah, in the, in the, if you fry it, if you fry it, like everything's pretty much fried chicken. I, I saw this and I was like... I don't even no, know what that is. What? No, nobody's eating. It. Godzilla. <laughs> nobody, nobody's eating. It. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's eating. It. <laughs> nobody's eating it. All right, good. I'm happy because I've never seen it before. You got cattle, like, Perk? Do I have cattle? Nah. I mean, I grew up around it so much. Yeah. I try to stay far away from that as possible. You can ride a horse? A little bit. Have to be a I know what I can right? do. I can tell you what I can do. What's that? You could put me in a chicken coop. I could catch a chicken. Kill it. Clean it and have it ready for you to cook have in 30 it. minutes. Wow. Yeah. Perk. Let's that do it. Let's that do was, it. That, right. was, that was my job when I was being raised by my grandparents because we had, you know, 500 chickens, 700 ducks. You know, we ate chicken Monday through Saturday. On Sunday, we was lucky to get pork chops. Yeah, yeah that was my job. So I could teach you. So we're here. So let's say <laughs> we're going to put a little chicken coop out here. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. At this stage, you, you catch chicken. Yeah. No problem. No problem. They're so small. They're small. They're quick, too. Yeah, exactly. Just, but, I these mean, little bastards can move. Yeah. You corner them. You grab them. You know what I mean? You grab it. Catch it by the neck. You know. <laughs> <laughs> neck pop. Yep. The neck yep. pop. You have a bucket on the side. You put them face down in the bucket. Ah. You have your pot of boiling boil water okay. on the side. Uh -huh. You dip it up in the boiling boil water. You have your table with your newspapers. The feathers come right off. Okay. Dip. Feathers. Nice. Dip. Dip. <laughs> Fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're frying this, frying and it. Then up. I, you know, cut it up for you. You know, you know, get it right. Hospitality. Yeah. Get the legs, get the neck. Yeah. So you're cut. You are country, like country. Yeah. 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 To yeah. the ball. Yeah. All, to the ball. When you got drafted number one over, or not, not number one, first rounder out of high school. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get drafted to? The Celtics. Hell yeah. Hell Straight yeah. Straight to Boston. Yeah. So you go from country ass Texas to Boston. I, I go from gumbo. To clam chowder, mm -hmm. two thousand three. Right. Uh, yep. <laughs> I go from gumbo to clam chowder. How was it? How was there a big? That feels like there's probably a little bit of no, culture shock. No, no, it was. And you know, you know, just thinking from a food aspect, you know, where I'm from, you have a lot of mom and pop shops where it's like you know fried sea, like fried seafood, right? Fried fish, fried crabs, because it's on the Gulf of Mexico, and so. When I get to Boston, all of a sudden it's lobster rolls, clam mm -hmm. chowder. So it's Bye. a complete culture shift and just the whole like energy and the vibe, meaning, you know, you could walk down where I'm from in Beaumont, you could be going into a grocery store and you could see a complete stranger and you're gonna speak. And Boston is not like that. No. And it's not anything to do with no. racism. It's just everybody's just tunnel vision. Yeah. Mind your business. And we mind our own fucking business. That's how it goes. Yeah, mind yep. your business. That's yep. six. That is? Yeah. Well, five actually. Five. Five. I dropped one. And plus the half. <laughs> yeah, that's on me. Right. Well, the yeah, but also. Equal. Because that one was genuine, too. Yeah, it was. Have you heard about this, AJ? So he's, he's the, um, you know, the fucks that slip by that are genuine <laughs> from him. We're only counting them as halves. I think that's fair, you know? What? what? Who considers the, if they're genuine or not? What do you mean? You well, he, he self yeah. 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 he self declares. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that one was. <laughs> yeah. Yep. In the first hour, he goes, "Did I?" But that was genuine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's how it started. <laughs> you know, it's okay. just halfies there. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about football. Hey, Park, we're appreciative of you. Thank you, Park. And I think all the people of Boston are very thankful for yeah. you saying it's not racism because he's from Boston, yes. and our immediate thought to him is, "Yeah, you guys." 
got super racist. Pretty no, racist. No, 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 no. That, that, that's, that's very rude to say. Yeah, it's but that's, saying that's, not that's not true. That's real. Like, even when my family, like, my parents come out, they're, they are stunned by how people, even just walking in the hallway, it's, it's like, how you doing? Like, they, no. they are Why do you care? You. Why do you care? I don't care how you, now exactly. I gotta ask you how you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Full song and dance. Even Have an I extra came, 45 seconds in the middle of the hallway. Even when I came out here, I assume same with, for you, like, yeah. what do you mean? What do you tell? Why? What are yeah. we doing here? Let's just, hmm, okay. Got yeah, something. but you got to master, um, Pittsburgh's not a big, hey, how you doing? It's a how you doing, keep moving town. Right. right. Yeah. How you doing, keep moving town. That is what Pittsburgh people are normally like. So if you can master the, hey, how you doing? And then yep. actually yeah. keep it moving. Right. Yeah. It is like kind of a win-win for both. Ohio is big, hey, how you doing crowd, right? Yeah, I think so. I think some places are more like, um, you know, they're, they don't mind getting in your face and arguing a little bit back and forth without fighting. Like that's, I think Boston's kind of like that. New York City, where they're around each other a lot, they don't mind yeah. being combative, I think. Okay, speaking sure. of that, there are reports coming out of the annual league meetings that Woody Johnson, mm. Johnson & Johnson, Woody Johnson, mm -hmm. New York Jets, Woody Johnson, Drip, Woody Johnson. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Got into it with Bob Sala uh -oh. at the at the gathering on Monday evening, mm -hmm. where there's media, where there's owners, mm -hmm. GMs, coaches. It's like a celebratory end almost of the annual league meetings, even though a couple meetings kind of are still set on Tuesday. Everything that has been addressed is going to be addressed and has been addressed. Now let's have a couple cocktails. Yep. Let's go ahead and shake some hands. Let's have a good time. Allegedly, Colleen Wolf is reporting that somebody told her that somebody at the party witnessed a heated conversation Ooh. on Monday night at the annual league meetings. I assume after seeing each other for the last three days at the annual league meetings, right. what could have boiled for 72 hours into a cocktail? Was it what drink is better than the other drink? Could have been. Like was Woody Johnson drinking espresso martinis? And he Ooh. was telling Bob Sala, you just need to get past the name. Okay, I understand mm -hmm. martini, espresso, two things that maybe you would never thought you'd be interested in. But when these two come together, we're talking magic. Yeah, but what about the glass? Yeah, got to get past the glass yep. as well. It is something that will win you over. And then Bob Sala said, I'm doing Jack and Cokes. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm drinking beer. Is that what they were mad about? Or were they pe potentially upset about how everything has been handled oh. over the last year or so while Aaron Rodgers gets hurt on the fourth play of the offensive season? AJ, your thoughts on what's going on over there? And has Aaron Rodgers told you exactly why they were in a heated conversation mm. at what was supposed to be a happy hour of affairs? Yeah, well, I, I've had uh, no information from Aaron on this this whole topic. This not, sure he's, good for. <laughs> not, not sure how dialed, Bullshit. dialed in he is to this. But wouldn't you think, honestly, if they let's say this did happen and they did get in a heated argument in a public place like that, I think it means the relationship is okay because if you truly hate somebody, you're going to stay away from them and not talk to them and mm. not even want to look in their own, in their direction, I think. Well, what if they did that for the first three days in the league meetings? That was the first time they were forced to be in the same room. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, that's what happens whenever you hear a report like this. You just go, hold the phone. What are they mad about? Is, is Woody around a lot throughout the year? Is he in the locker room all the time? He, he's always around? Remember, his social, his yeah, Instagram. TikToks and the IG, yeah. He's dabbing yeah, right. people up. Yep. Go on. Mm -hmm. Hey, go and see you, Brees. Mm -hmm. That whole thing's yeah. happening. It's got the, you know, with sauce. The, the sauce, sauce drip. It's weird you only heard about this, though, from one person, though, because every media, every every person that covers the NFL seemed like they were there. Really? You okay, I might be wrong. In the clip, she might have said it happened on Sunday night, so it wasn't oh, okay. actually at the big party. I oh. could be wrong there. I think she's having Bruce double check. I watched the clip. I think it was Monday in the clip, she said. Yeah. Well, the party we had heard about that everybody goes to was on Monday. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which we are not going to be able to go to. Ask Kaboli. Call Kaboli. He was there. Kaboli. Wasn't he there? Oh, Toast yeah. him with all of them? <clears throat> Let's call Kaboli. I assume. Drinking so, his uh, drink. Yeah, his Verner's ginger ale yep. Yep. and lemonade. Yes. Mm -hmm. half no, unsweet. No, What's your drink? Unsweet tea. You, you're, yeah. you're, you're, let's say you're forced to be at one of these events. Happy hour cocktail affair. They have access to every liquor available, every mixer, every beer available. What would you go with at this type of event? Uh, you know what? Just I'm gonna keep it simple. You know, give me a hint and coke, and I'm alright. Okay. I'm gonna sip on it all night. Have you had, mm -hmm. ever had an espresso martini? No. <laughs> well, guess what? Listen, no. Perk, I don't know how to get this. ready. <laughs> it's gonna be a tough conversation. Get ready. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough conversation to get you through all the barriers that are gonna hold you back from getting an espresso <laughs> martini. But once you get past it all. It's worth it. Game changer. It is absolutely worth it. They are phenomenal. But with this Woody and Bob heated convo, mm -hmm. isn't it sometimes a great thing 
to have those tough love yeah. conversations. Mm -hmm. Always better on the other side, you think? Yeah. Unless Conflict it's completely good. over. Unless Con it's, it's Mike, Mc Mike McCarthy. Conflict is good. He used to say that all the time in our team media. Yeah, because unless it ends completely, it, like yeah. if the co if the conflict is don't sweep it under the rug. Stop sweeping things under the rug. We we should hash these things out. Yeah. But you're going to be better afterwards because you learn each other's side mm -hmm. on it. Unless mm -hmm. it's completely over, right? Like Which it yeah. might be after this year. Oh, there's a chance. Oh. Bob Sala's got to win tw twelve games or he's getting fired. Absolutely. Joining us now is a man who was <laughs> potentially yes. at the party down in Orlando at the uh -huh. annual league meetings uh, that potentially had an owner head coach heated conversation take place. Ladies and gentlemen, from The Athletic, Mark Boley. Yeah, boy. All right. Here we go. Thank you for being so accessible, Kaboli. We very much. Well, go ahead. Well, I was just sleeping two seconds ago, but that's beside the point. It's 118, what? Mark. Mark. <laughs> Let's go ahead and wake up. Mark. Okay, you're an adult. You're a journalist. But good morning. Good morning, yeah. good morning Mark. Good morning, Mark. Good to see you. Hey, I know you might be you know, before the first coffee or whatever you got going on and don't know if you have your Achilles workouts done yet or not. So I don't know if you're still asleep or mine's still a little bit cloudy. Did Robert Sala and Woody Johnson have a heated conversation at any of the gatherings down there at annual league meetings just a few days ago? You're, you're acting like uh, that I was cognizant enough to even realize something happening. I just remember seeing Ryan Clark for a second. I remember seeing Mike Tomlin for a second. Then everything else was pretty much I was leaning against the pole and they were asking me if I needed help out. So I, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what, what were you were drinking, happened? Mark? Did you get roofied in there? What happened, Get boy? up. I was, leaning, I was leaning against the pole. Just okay. like, you know, tired and the, the, I guess the police, whatever, the security came over and says, hey, son, you okay? I'm like, no, I'm good, I'm good. I thought they were going to escort me out, so I, I popped up. Yeah, but I did not see anything. <laughs> okay. All right, Mark, we appreciate it. Good morning, Mark. Yeah, Thanks so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Bowl. Yeah, Mark. Mark. Wait, what, he was just tired? Uh, not what, story. what happened? He, Sounds like it. He's just got the hottest bat in the league <laughs> right guy. now. Can't miss. <laughs> Cannot miss. I just woke up two <laughs> seconds ago. Well, hey, what about that party where every owner, GM, yep. and media was, you think I'm cognizant? <laughs> Cog <laughs> Cog we just need to Cog keep feeding him the rock, okay? Yeah. We need to give him Wait. 20 touches at least. LeBron in 2012 right now. I'm assuming it was not espresso martini. No, no, no. no. I, I'm he might have been with the Hen and Coke. Yeah. He might, he might have gone with the just a couple <laughs> Guinnesses. Just, just washed her down. Head. Yeah. I was laying on a pole. <laughs> <laughs> you think I was kind of we thought we were, <laughs> The police is, well, the security. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder Jesus. he just woke up. Hey, Perk, <laughs> he just you, recovered. Do, you've <laughs> never heard of that human, I assume. That's Mark Caboli. Mm -hmm. He's a journalist. Covers the Steelers. What are you laughing at, <laughs> Bert? Covers the Steelers. Bert, what are you Bert, laughing at? Bert. Can't you, Bert. Day one, we can't be having He's you the just best in the biz. laugh yeah. in the face of journalism. Um, He's, okay. Whoa. He's the wind horse of Pittsburgh, okay? Yeah. okay. He's the windy of Pittsburgh. Okay. Windy, you're like Tom Brady of Pittsburgh. All right, let's talk about some news around the NFL yep. because obviously Mark Caboli was there, but not really. Yep. Um, <laughs> Chiefs have signed a rugby star. This is not the first rugby player that has been signed to the NFL, but this is certainly one that has a lot of hype and buzz. Why? Because the Kansas City Chiefs are involved. So what does that mean? Well, Andy Reid is going to be able to draw plays to make this man as successful as he possibly could be as a wide receiver. He's been training down at IMG. Luis Uriz Zamet. I have no idea why I used an accent for that name. I believe he's yeah, Irish. Excited to see if this works out. The NFL has been trying to figure out if sports that are similar to football can translate into football. We at the Indianapolis Colts, we tried a couple guys from New Zealand. I think we had an African rugby player come onto our team and give it a shot. Other teams have signed rugby players. I think there's other styles of football, like in Ireland. And obviously, there's been a, kickers have been able to transition. Not so many, you know, positional players have been able to do so. This guy's fast. This guy's got Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, a work ethic that I assume will guide him to a place. And he's a properly jocked white, yep. which yep. we certainly yep. appreciate. I think this is potentially a move of let's see what he can do, give him a year of maybe NFL coaching, NFL practicing, and see if he can, can uh, transition. Because if we can break through on rugby players becoming NFL guys, then the global expansion of the sport will expedite quickly because rugby is – 
everywhere, seemingly. Hasn't been able to do so as much. Maybe this guy's the guy, AJ. I guess a running back receiver, I would imagine he, they want him to be a, a special teams monster as well. Like, Can you think of that guy? I mean, the kickoff, I don't know what it's going to look like with well, these new rules, but kickoff, punt, everything, he should be a monster. But why shouldn't he? They should be able to cross over, especially when you watch him go through all those football drills. Now, I know it's a completely different sport and a new sport for him, but man. It should. There should be some crossover here, and if anyone should, why not him? There's some highlights uh, of him from rugby right there. He's number 14. Just picked that one scoop. Did score. What a dog. Mm-hmm. What an absolute what beast. Is. And we hope it works out. We had um, we had Daniel Adongo, who is a huh? prolific rugby player uh, back in Africa. Uh, like I think really good. You see the photos of him and how fast he was and how jacked he was and how athletic he was. It was like, okay, this feels like if anybody's going to be able to crack into football, this the leverage is just vastly different. Most of the hits in rugby are coming from like a straight – like I don't know if it's not the high impact because there's pads, so guys throw themselves like missiles more, so it's a little bit more of a punch as opposed to a tackle like rugby happens. But whatever the case was, he dressed a few games. We had him on special teams a few times. He played gunner for me at like six foot six. 240 pounds. He was obviously incredibly athletic. But for one reason or another, it hasn't been able to just crack through. Maybe with the new kickoff <laughs> rules, it helps because it's one line and they'll be able to utilize him as a weapon. But also, if anybody's going to be able to figure out how to use a fast wide receiver person that can catch a ball, it's Andy Reid. This feels good. This feels like it has a chance. Yeah, so he got on my radar. It was like a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, uh, when they announced it. It was like big news over there, and I don't know how it got in my timeline. I think it's because he was 22. He's now He just turned 23. And like he had this whole huge career ahead of him and decided that he wanted to try to play in the NFL. And then, yeah, it goes. I think they'll all, they all go to IMG and train and stuff like that. But I, th- I think he just, I saw he ran just a 4 4 5, which was, I mean, that's pretty solid. If, and if you're young, I feel like it, get, it gives them a lot better chance than like the other dudes that have come in. I feel like have been like 29, 30. They've had their rugby careers. This, this guy decided, you know, I, I want an NFL career. I don't want to be a rugby star my entire life. Yeah, 4 4 5, great team or two. And he's yeah. not scared to hit people. It's like, depending upon what he's like in the locker room, how he is at practice, and IMG, I think, is a good move to at yeah. least teach the basics of putting the pads on. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like just putting the pads on, looking like football player. You know, one sport that has been able to transition into football has been basketball. The guys that don't play any football. Football at all in college have been able to transition. Not, not a lot of people throughout the history. We had Eric Swope in Indianapolis. He yeah. was a University of Miami basketball player. Obviously, Antonio Gates, everybody goes to because he's Alec one Cox. of the, the greatest of all time. Mo Alley mm-hmm. Cox, also here out of ECU, I think. Yeah, VCU. For uh, the Indianapolis Colts. So, basketball players have been able to transition into football. Do you think it's because football is presented to them as a kid so they understand, like, kind of what football is? Is that a why do you think <clears throat> basketball players have been able to do it as opposed to maybe other sports? Because the majority of basketball players grew up playing football. Like, I don't know no elite basketball players that didn't play football. Okay. Hmm. like Because you guys get called soft a lot. Yeah, and I A hate lot. That. A lot. You we, get like NBA yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, I, every I, night. I, yeah. like, I hate it. Because football was my first love. Like, defensive end, yeah. I was a monster, Jeez. right? And then when I got to the ninth grade, my high school coach was like, it ain't – Six nine defensive ends. Oh, you could have been the one though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could you imagine you? <sighs> yeah. You yeah, would but, take Calais Campbell. Oh, him yeah. into Forrest Buckner but on the same D line. I think like you know when you you look at like Rondo, right? Like Rondo, he really had a passion. Oh yeah. He was like, I might retire early from the NBA and go play football. Like Russell Westbrook. Look at his yeah, story. Russell. Like Russell Westbrook was a dog in football. LeBron James, a dog in football. In Ohio, which yeah. is a football state. Yeah. AI. So Allen Iverson yeah. was number AI. one, right? Mm-hmm. Both? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. He could have gone in there. So that is potentially the advantage. These guys at least know football. And, and yeah. to be honest with you, in Texas, this is how a lot of basketball players are raised, right? Their parents' mindset is if your kid is on the court and he's not aggressive, the next thing you're going to do is say, you know what, I'm putting you in tackle football to bring the dog out of you because I'm not seeing it on the basketball floor. So Texas is also a football state. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> big time football. Lombardi state. said yesterday, he said you wanna if you want to know if a wide receiver is going to be great, watch him play basketball too. Because like there's the the translation of wide receiver to basketball is very, very similar. How right. do you think Lewis is a basketball? I bet you he's oh, a uh, no, no, <laughs> weapon. <laughs> Me. No, I kind of What's this guy's Why you don't like, like Lewis? No, oh, he's like, white. We no, get it. No, we know I your love, MO perk. I love Lewis. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But I think I think both of the both of the sports, like you can get something out of it. Like, 
playing. There's yeah. a lacrosse dude who just got his first points in the NBA, I think for the Warriors the, the other night. Yeah. Who? Oh, man. He played only lacrosse in college? I believe so. Oh, Paul he Rabel? Just, it, he happened, just it happened a few days ago. Was it Paul Rabel? It, it was not, not Paul Rabel, unfortunately. Oh, I, uh, I want to say like Matt Spencer or something like that, Spencer something. But, yeah, lacrosse is one, too, where it's like if you're playing football – in the in the fall, you are definitely playing mm-hmm. lacrosse in those <clears throat> regions, like New England. Mostly, ho- like hockey in football is partnered with. Who's the Notre lacrosse. Dame kid? The, that was football player, and then now he's playing lacrosse. Uh, Jordan no. Faison. Yeah, he had like uh, he's football guy. He's monster. Yeah, slot, on lacrosse. Yeah, slot receiver had like 50, 30 catches or something like that. And now, yeah, this is his first year with the lacrosse team because he's a freshman and he is unbelievable. AJ, we all agree, though, that if one of these rugby stars makes it in the NFL, now obviously punters and kickers have happened for Australia and for Europe and everything like that, but if one of these rugby stars is scoring touchdowns, then all of a sudden, I think that expedites the- Everybody signs them. Everybody mm-hmm. starts signing these guys and trying to find find these dudes over there. But yeah. also the over there, I think you become bigger NFL. F- like, oh, Roger yeah. Goodell would like this oh, guy. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Roger Goodell would grow really like game. this guy to Let's do Let's grow well. the game, yeah. Roger's yeah, like, going to do whatever he can to try to give this guy a push. Well, not cheap, though. Is. No, uh, no. No, no, no. Well, you can't. Well, it, helps can't to sign, but it helps that the Chiefs signed him. Bingo. I mean, we know we're going to have the best opportunity possible for him to see if he can make it. Yeah, we'll give him Andy Reid drawn up plays. We'll give him Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball. Mm-hmm. And if this dude hits, rugby fans everywhere are going to see the highlights. Hey, yeah. Imagine the hook and ladder they can do with that dude. You know how they pitch <laughs> the ball in rugby. So Bruce said, yep. Bruce actually brought it up earlier. He was like, remember Travis Kelsey did the yep. yeah. throwback. Throw back. Imagine if this yep. guy's gig is, hey, you just need to stay in lateral distance yeah, for Travis Kelsey. What's my job on this one? Wherever Travis goes, we just need Keep you to be that. an option for him. It is because – what if they do start to evolve offense with this? And that's the theory. Then it's like, okay, so now laterals are involved. Who's the best at the laterals? Well, the people that it's a massive part of their game. Okay, now rugby players get – it's like an, it is a copycat league too. If mm-hmm. this guy has success, especially with the Chiefs, you'll see another 30 players get signed by different teams. Like, yep, oh, we got a guy. Because you got rugby – New Zealand, you got rugby Africa, yeah, you got rugby in Europe, mm. you got rugby everywhere. So this, this guy's never played football though, right? He's never played football before in his life. Yeah, that's the thing, and that's yeah. why. How I, tough is that when you put a helmet on, you put shoulder pads on? You know, just your vision. You can get used to that after a little bit. It'll it'll take a little bit of an adjustment. But yeah, if you've never you never played, and then all of a sudden you're twenty some years old and you strap it on and you're out there with an NFL team. Yeah, that might be tough. Well, that's why the basketball players have been able to transition because they at least know the game a little bit, mm-hmm. like the leverage yeah. and the points and like pressure and like all that type of stuff. Not that rugby isn't a very physical sport and has tackling and you have to be incredibly athletic. We're not saying that, but not every NFL player that can run well with the ball is going to be good at rugby. No, like that is just there's different. It's different sports, similar different sports. I hope yeah. this guy's good. I legit for the good of the game. I hope this guy figures it out. Do we know I mean I, I guess I I don't watch a whole lot of rugby but like is a guy like this athletic running that fast of a 40 do you think that's an anomaly or do you think there are a lot of guys out there like that? I don't know. I think they're I think they got guys out on the wings. Some of those right, like, four, 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 you got a lot of guys running four four out there. That's what I mean. I mean, like four, you think this is like Tyree Kill of rugby. Like this guy I'm not maybe not Tyree there. Kill but he got to be top he's got to be like one of the top Top speed guys, don't you think? Yeah, because you got to be able to tackle, so you got to have a little bit of weight. Yeah. You can't just be like 175 pounds. Right. Rugby. You got to be a little bit bigger. A little, you got to have a little girth. Be thick. You need a little soup can in you. Exactly. And to AJ's <laughs> point, too, like, you it's know, yeah. perk. Two, I've been enjoying this conversation. Together. Running 4 I'm 4 learning. 5. Don't learn from us. Without pads on. <laughs> like, is this guy going to be able to play faster? Or are you going to put the pads on? It's like, oh, this guy's running like a 4-9 now all of a sudden. Well, they showed, somebody said they clocked him at like 24 miles an hour yeah. or something. Like, here comes Bruce. Four. Yeah, yeah, 24 really? uh, and change two. miles per hour tracked. Uh, third fastest in a rugby game based on a quick wow. Google. That was uh, that was from the Soviet uh, trackers on the field when playing a game. Was tracked at 25. What does Tyreek run? How fast does Tyreek run? In pads, he had like 22, I think, last year. Okay. 23. Yeah, so this guy runs 4.45 4, but has 24. This is top end speed. He can really take top off a of defense. He can. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah if he, he can. If he, <laughs> AJ, sounds like you're not the biggest believer. No, no. Yeah, I, this guy I, I, come on. Man, I didn't this guy, like you're that. trying to make me a not a believer. I'm the one who's been pumping him up from the beginning. Why not? He should be able to make I it. I don't know. It might be that's... weird. It, if you've never tackled with a helmet on, what kind of adjustment will that be when you actually wear a helmet and tackle? Good news is he's only getting tackled and probably never. This guy runs 24 miles an hour. You're right. 
<laughs> Here's the fastest NFL players this season. Uh, DK Metcalf, 22 miles an hour. These full pads. Chase Brown, 22 miles an hour. Tyreek Hill, 22 miles an hour. All speeding in some school zones. Devon A. Chain. Devon? Devon? Achan? Devon? Ooh. I forget. We changed, His it, name changed it, halfway it, through the season. His first name was not the issue. It was the it's, <coughs> Texas boy. A-chan. A-chan. Yeah, he is a Texas boy. His, his accent, though. I think led some people just to assume his name was something, mm-hmm. and then they were just pronouncing his name wrong for his, the entirety of his season and, career and so far. A train is just such a sick last name; it was yeah, hard not to look out for the A train. We got A chain. <laughs> so it was hard not to just buy into yeah. that. But yeah. I think it was A chain, but he A-chan. had that Texas, yeah, you know, the, little, the little sway. Yeah, little how sauce. much? How many miles per hour is he losing when he puts pads on? That's the question, yeah. right? Because well, how many? How much does it weigh? Fifteen pounds. Total? And how do you only run a four four five? No. What yeah. DK run? Four three something. All those guys at the top, I assume, are four three four two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. for sure. What's the mile per hour? Like, what can D- what can DK run without pads on? How what, it was does a he get twenty seven? Well, he this did, is DK. DK yeah. ran a four three three. All those guys at the top, our oh, fastest, were at four threes probably. Yeah. They're all four threes. So him at four four five. I mean, back in the day, four four five is really good, but now in the modern combine, he these move, dudes though. are running if he, four if he has some lateral, If he can get in and out of his brakes and everything, he could be a good slot guy. Run those little whip routes and do everything. And he's going to block. You know, he's yeah. going to block yeah. that yeah. field. He's going to be first one in, last yeah. one out. Yeah. You know, we assume no that's the case. He's going to be a bring your work pail uh, or your your lunch pail to work guy every day. Mm-hmm. To your point, though, four four five like didn't. Pork Chop Robinson, the DN from Penn State, run a four four five. Yeah, and he's like two sixty or two fifty five or something yeah, like really. that. Dude, it's different right now. It makes no sense. D lineman. We had a forty four and a half inch vert yesterday at uh, Mercer. Mercer. Yeah. No, no, Mercer is forty four inches. I think somebody at San Diego State or somewhere. Oh, really? Somebody did forty four and a half inch vert some corner. You the know, Big Twelve combine. You know, I was having an argument or a debate or we could call it a conversation with some of my childhood friends, and I, in my opinion. Some of the most athletic people in the world are offensive linemen and defensive linemen. Mm-hmm. Have you seen them For run sure. now? Hell yeah, that's why I said it. They, there was like a 4-6 or something out of a 280-pounder. Two, what they're doing at that size, like that, that athleticism, I mean, it's really it's a beautiful thing to see. Well, think about their knees, the beating that the knees are taking. Mm-hmm. Every single step at 290, 310 pounds. Well, yeah. No, nah, because they built different. It's not like they're... Like me, like 6'10", you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to tell you my weight. Where are we? Are we heading down or are we heading up? We heading down, but when okay, I get well, comfortable. It's all that matters. Right? Yo, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all that matters. Thanks to Ozempic. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shout out to Ozempic. Hey, listen, you got to. <laughs> yeah, get it. Hey, it is available. You'd be a dummy not to if you were able to um, uh, qualify for it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think that's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's on like national news every night. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They got a new thing about Ozempic. It's doing this. It's fighting off this. I guess there's like some. Stuff going on, birth control pill is not maybe Did that being a side effect is not not working not as working. well yeah, because yeah, yeah. the Ozempic's mm. potentially doing something. So there's like a, and I don't know if it's just an internet report that I read, but it seemed I like think. it came from a legit account. So there's like a bunch of babies, like, a bunch of babies, people, people getting pregnant. Yeah, yeah. It's Ozempic not, babies. It's not because you look better; it's because yeah. like it's potentially well. affecting something else. But it's been great. I mean, <laughs> it's been great for a lot of people. You're not yep. like a lot of people that I have met. I'm doing just fine. They, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah I'm doing just fine. I mean, they're doing yeah. it in... You haven't, had to, <laughs> you haven't had to change your birth control yet? No. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled, Perk. You might have to. You might have to. Um, Bob Kraft. I don't know if you know this. You know, because Michael Jordan's last dance was like... Incredible. Perfectly timed. Yeah, oh, absolutely. When it came out. The yeah. way they let it just roll completely mm-hmm. unfiltered. And the whole world was looking for something. It's about Michael Jordan. So now, like, docu-series about things that are great. Like, Tom Brady's was going to come out, and everybody was jacked up because of the way The Last Dance went. Then the Patriots were going to release this Dynasty docu-series. Mm. It was going to be on Apple, and everybody was going to be jacked up about it. Holy hell, we're getting a chance to learn about the Dynasty. Mm-hmm. Well, who's involved in it? Who's on? Everybody. Yeah. What do you mean everybody? Bill Belichick's involved in it. Right. Adam Terry's involved in it. Rodney Harrison's involved in it. Robert Kraft is involved with it. His son. Brady. Jonathan, Jonathan Kraft. Kraft. Yeah. He actually is part 
maker yeah. of this entire thing. Tom Brady's Gronk. part of it. Everybody you Edelman, Amendola, yeah. all of, every all human you have heard from uh, any of it. I got Woody, Damian Woody. They D yeah, Wood. Yeah, Wood. Yeah. Wood. Matthew Slater. Hey, he's, yeah. he's looking good too. Yeah. Yeah, he's looking yeah, D Wood. Yeah, yeah. Hey, keep going, D Wood. <laughs> I bet he was that boy. How about that haircut he had? Oh, with the shape of beard. Oh, yeah. I hope he still has the clean shave. He looks phenomenal. But all these people were a part of it, so we're like, mm -hmm. okay, we're gonna really get some good shit out of this. Now Patriots fans have taken it as like this is a burial. This is a hit piece pretty much on Bill Belichick, making him look bad, make the crafts look great. Robert Kraft was asked about, uh, you know, the documentary that he's executive producer of mm -hmm. um, and how it went over whenever he was down at the annual league meetings. Uh, Rodney Harrison and Matthew, uh, although I didn't, I just heard quietly that they've all felt that way. And actually there were some really prominent people that were interviewed for hours that never were used. So, a um, little disappointed that there was no more of a real positive yeah. approach, uh, especially for Patriot fans who have lived the experience with us. Robert, one quick follow-up mm. on that. Um, Shout out to Mark Daniels. Gave it a nice little look at the end there about the question, how it is. And you said who has final cut? Yeah. Yeah, I think his family literally executive producers yeah. of this entire thing, and they're a part of it. But do they necessarily have an understanding of how something's going to go? That's what Bob's saying. I watched it. I okayed it. But yeah. I had no idea that this is how this was going to go because he's getting painted as oh yeah he, right as the reason that it's the whole documentary has gone this way. Yeah, yeah. He so is. Kraft's like, I'm sorry, the Patriots fans didn't like when I watched it. I was like, this is awesome. Well, that's because you are getting hoited toited as the greatest thing of all time. Yeah. I appreciate him acknowledging, though, mm -hmm. how people have responded to it. Boston Connor, does this make you feel better about the Kraft family? Because from the way you were describing it, is a lot of people up in New England are like, to hell with the Krafts if this is how they're going to paint Bill Belichick after the dynasty run. Yeah, and that, and that sentiment, I think, with a lot of people definitely still um, exists. For me, personally, I, I mean, the statement, I don't give a shit, the $50 million new facility that's coming in, I do give a shit about that. That's awesome. But I was thinking about this specifically last night. Like, there was a way to do this with all the drama and everything. Like, they could have split it up easily. And you mentioned the Brady man in the arena. Like, what Brady did was he avoided all the controversy, which I think is a huge part of this. And I also think, as a Patriots fan, still very interested in in the controversies that went on because how, how could you not be like spy gate the flake gate all those things we're all in we're all interested in con controversy yeah mm -hmm. in, in the i mean that's why the real housewives and bingo bingo like everything is popular everything. it keeps mm -hmm. going and like that had to be involved like I, I i'm not one of the patriots fans who are pissed at any mention of the things that went wrong during the dynasty what was a problem like that's not the documentary was supposed to show those things like that is what i wanted to hear about but it, it's like the the intro in in the finish is are, are the problems because the the in between episodes five to eight being mm -hmm. spygate and deflate gate and hernandez that that's exactly where they should have been it, it was more so like i probably wanted to hear more about the brady and belichick you know collapse towards the end they could have had the last episode be all about that and then they could have even you know pushed those super bowls together and made them maybe one or two episodes but so you're happy Kraft acknowledged it I, i'm glad that he is but a, it doesn't change shit no it doesn't change anything i'm glad he's aware that this is it's gone this terrible for the Patriots because if he wasn't and he thought everything was you know dandy then I would think that his son is just feeding him complete bullshit 24-7 so the fact that he knows that people aren't happy about it is nice because that means he's still you know in the trenches with the rest of us. Who was the family that was pissed after the last dance? The GM. So so and I was going to bring that point up. Go ahead. Like think about how Jerry Cross was mm -hmm. yeah. viewed yeah. right in the, yeah. in the last dance right he was viewed as like you know like a bad guy. Oh yeah. When he was the reason that, like you know, Chicago got six NBA World titles. Like he went discovered Scottie Pippen. He went to a rival uh, Detroit Pistons and put and got Dennis Rodman. He hired Phil Jackson and made that move to make that triangle offense what it was. You know what I mean? So, and it's unfair because again. He get criticized for breaking up the dynasty, right? And but that's, not making it. But not making it. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You know the the hard part about sports, and I and I and I think about this when you know we look at the Golden State Warriors right now. And I was I've been one of the ones that said they should have 
you know, cut ties and traded Clay Thompson and, you know, moved on and, and went in the different directions because when you're dealing with business as a general manager, okay, your job is to make sure you do for what's best for that organization. You cannot have emotions tied to business. And sometimes you can hold on for too long. Mm -hmm. And and we saw a prime example, what was it at the uh, ring night uh, uh, ceremony? I think it was what? Uh, they booed him, right? They. They booed his, his, oh, his the wife. widow, his wife. Yeah. Oh, cross! You went yes. up into the well, the ring of honors. Yeah. yeah, and it was a it was a it was a sad fucking yeah. moment. Oh, it was yeah. it was wrong, man. Seriously, yeah. it was wrong, and it was just like his wife was this, crying. He yeah. was a hell of he's one of the greatest GMs to ever walk foot in, into a front office in NBA history. He didn't deserve that, but because of the last dance, that's how people viewed him. Yeah, and it's I, I think because of that, because there was a lot of OGs that came out afterwards and were like. Man, Krause doesn't even have a chance to defend. Like mm -hmm. Krause's not That's, even really mm -hmm. getting to talk about himself. So maybe because of how the reaction was to the Krause portrayal is why everybody's been so loud about Bill in this particular one. Because it's like, hey, hold on now. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we understand what is potentially taking place here and where the information is coming from and who they would like to see get look look better. Maybe we learn that as a society from mm -hmm. the last dance with the Krause thing. I don't know, but everybody has seemingly come out and been like. So Bill Belichick's the bad guy. Huh? Yeah. And normally, that is not how people that watch something take it. Normally, whenever you watch something and it's presented in a way like, hey, this is the truth, people just digest it, take it, and they're like, yep, this is how we view it. Like the Kraus thing. I mean, mm -hmm. It wasn't even thought about like, hey, look at how great this guy was. It was immediately like, this guy wanted to run people out of town at the end of it immediately. And everybody's like, yep, that's got to be the truth. With this one, though, the dynasty, it feels like the people that were supposed to say, yep, that's got to be the truth have gone a complete opposite direction. They're pissed off at the people yes. that are trying to tell their truth in the entire thing. Well, and I think that's also why Kraft is still the blame. Like, the Jerry Krause thing makes sense because it's like, hey, you're basically pissing on this guy's legacy and he has no chance to defend himself because he's dead. Like, if you look at the stuff Kraft was saying, like, there's no, oh, what I said got taken out of context. Like, he chose to say the stuff he said about Bill. They leave the, question, like, they leave the questions in so you know exactly – whether or not the filmmaker is trying to pull something out of him or get him to kind of lean one way, like, he still chose to answer the way he did. So, like, for him to be surprised after the math, it's like, well, yeah, I understand you're busy and you're a little bit older now, but, like, you know exactly what you said. Like, you said all that stuff, you know, whereas with Jerry Krause, it's like he, he never had a chance to defend himself. Like, Kraft could have taken it a completely different route with Belichick, and he still he chose to say the things he did, and which is why a lot of people are so pissed off. Hey, you bring up uh, Golden State, which means it's a perfect time. Uh, we should do the basketball. We should, yeah, do, we the should basketball. do. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do the basketball. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Perk, we're going to do the basketball. Things uh, happening in the basketball world that you would obviously have a better answer for mm -hmm. than us, which is why, and we're thankful that you are here. Draymond Green, this guy, when's he going to learn? Come on. When's he going to learn? Gets ejected from a game last night in the middle of a playoff hunt, I do believe, for the Golden State mm -hmm. Warriors against Orlando. Good team. Yeah. Good team. In Orlando, hot, long travel. Draymond Green in the first quarter gets ejected, gets teed up, then lets a ref know that he is a... Uh, I believe the the framing of the word, if I'm a good lip reader, is a uh, a, a a female dog, right? Ah. Ass, mm -hmm. and then a word that if I was to say would end our entire show forever. Correct. Mm -hmm. He said that to a ref on the way out. Gets another TC. And he's been ejected. This is Draymond Green basketball. This is what uh, we should just expect to him until he retires, because you know in other sports. Like hockey. We talked to Brad Marchand, who's a Boston Bruin and obviously a superstar. He was a pest for a large portion of his career. Then he got the C on his chest. He became a veteran. He even said, I have to change the way I operate because of who I am now. I can't be as big. Is Draymond Green just going to be this dude until he retires? He or? can't be. He, he can't be. And watching Steph and look at his emotions. I don't know if he's crying, but I could tell he's exhausted. And if you're Draymond Green... When does it stop? If you're Steve Curry and you're Steph Curry, when have you had enough? Okay? Do you understand the magnitude of that game last night? The Houston Rockets are 
on their heels oh, like a pair of church socks, meaning <laughs> that they could actually – the Golden State Warriors are one loss mm -hmm. and one Rockets win away from them being out of the play-in tournament. You're on a back-to-back. -back. You just got a, a great win against the Miami Heat. You're going into town playing a tough Orlando Magic team. Jonathan Kaminga is out. Steph Curry is available. By the way, Steph Curry is not 100% healthy. Right, mm -hmm. so he's laying it out out there on the line, night in and night out. You can see it in his face. You can see it in his in his in his in his the the love of the game and how much he wants to win. And Draymond, you go and do some dumb ass stuff like that. And you could hear Chris Chris I mean Steve Kerr remarks after the game. You know he said you know he did it to himself basically, like he deserved he deserved it. it yeah. He deserved it. Steph Curry, we need him on the court. He know what that means. Like. Draymond, at this point, you got suspended. You were supposed to go get help. You were supposed to come back a better man. Now, I'm not asking you to change your approach to the game for your tenacity and your passion, but you're supposed to be able to balance the two. If you're not balancing it, then all of a sudden, then you might need to go get more help. And help is okay because I was one of those guys that I led the league in technical fouls. I got ejected a lot, right? Oh, yeah. And the best thing that ever happened to me in my basketball career and in life, I got in a fight outside of a nightclub um, the sum, one of the summer's off-seasons that I was playing uh, with the Oklahoma City Thunder. And Sam Presti, who I love so much, is the, gen the general manager running things in Oklahoma City, does a hell of a job. Got a great eye for talent. Uh, what he's did for that, for that franchise is, has been a beautiful thing to see. Um, a great friend of my, mine that's head of the medical staff, Donnie Strack, you know, great friend of mine. You know, they, they came to me and they said, hey, Perk, look, we want to help you, but you got to want to help yourself, right? I spun two months down in Kansas, okay? And I went to anger management, and I was in there with a whole lot of doctors and nurses and, like, t you know, from around the country that, you know, was in there. I literally, my summer was spent in Kansas while I was in class from eight to five. And, you know, the first thing that I had to realize was that I had to want to get help and had to have some level of, of accountability. Draymond Green is a intelligent human being, right? And at some point you got to learn self-control. And I think this off season, he needs to address the problems that he's having and, and like live in the moment, own the moment. And it's okay to get help, but he got to correct this because right now, like, I, I used to praise Draymond so much for being the leader of the team, the heart and soul of the team. But, like, that's gone out the window. You've been fighting since you came back from suspension to get that, that title back to your teammates. And last night he took 10 steps back. Well, I appreciate you telling your story there. Mm -hmm. I did not know all of that. No. And shout out to you and the people at Oklahoma City. I love them. Yeah, that's huge. I love them. Hey, and shout out to you saying, yeah, because yeah. you get drafted out of high school mm -hmm. to Boston. Mm -hmm. So life and maturity, dealing with things, you know, people have development in all that work. That's maturity, what you did. And signing up to go do that in Kansas in yeah, the off geez. season. Long hey, summer. good for yeah. you, Park. <laughs> Park. Park. And I assume that's a massive pivotal thing that you did to change and course correct for the rest of your career. Absolutely. Yeah, for me, Absolutely. I, I got arrested for a public intoxication. The NFL puts you into this substance of abuse program. 27 months, I was getting tested eight times a month by the NFL, and I needed that. Like, I needed that or I was partying too much mm -hmm. beforehand. Made my career so much better. I've tried to talk to young guys that like get caught up in the party room like, hey, after you're done, it'll still be there. And some guys choose to do it and some guys choose not to. But like those moments really save yeah. lives. Like yes. it saved mine. I assume you feel it the did. same way about it your did. career. It did. Okay, good. So we hope everybody chases that because he's a dad too. Yeah. You know, we just saw his kids. But mm -hmm. but you just just in, like you can't do that. And he's smart enough to understand the moment. Like this season well, I'm one of the few, or uh, probably the only one that Ben said break it up. Like the All Star break, I thought they should have traded Clay, give him some yep. new life somewhere, whatever, right? But after this season, they have some hard decisions to make, tough conversations. So you, you at least want to try to go out with a bang. Yeah. You can't let Steph. Do you down, think they man. know that? You think they know that after the yes, season it's going to be some really tough. I mean, but that's why that's why they tried to trade for LeBron James at the All Star break. 
I like this though. I, if yeah. Steph's gonna yeah. be knocking down threes <laughs> and giving the sleep. But, 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 I love that. So and and I love that. Chair. Who is he talking to on the chair? The I, chair? I don't know. Yeah, well, it, well, let it off. I don't give a damn. I love <laughs> it. Hey, as long as you're not getting texts and getting yeah. kicked out. I mm -hmm. guess you were ejected four times, had 102 texts. Hell yeah. Um, Draymond's <laughs> been ejected 19 or 14 times with 149 texts. Jesus. I believe. So uh, 149 technicals, 19 ejections for him. You were ejected four times at 102 texts. Jeez, 15 flagrants. Yeah. So, I mean, that's <laughs> – and this is a topic of conversation, and this guy's multiple-time champion. Yeah. Very wealthy go, man off of basketball. Mm -hmm. Made a lot of money. Been a pivotal piece of this whole thing. And the only highlights we ever see are just him acting like an asshole on a court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes need that. Sometimes it feels like teammates are like – we didn't need it right now. Three minutes in. Yeah. Show's wrapping up here on ESPN. We'll continue on YouTube and ESPN Plus with Big Perk on this Sweet 16 Thursday. AJ Hawk has the final messaging for you. Go ahead, AJ. Yeah, I'm just curious what you are allowed and what you're not allowed to say to these NBA refs before you get thrown out. What well, is the line? I guess that is in the line of the beholder. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, we're off. Okay. We is there a list of things you can't say to them? No. How's it so, work? I mean, look. Ask Kelly Oubre. But but seriously, like, you have a relationship with these referees. You know them. You know what I'm saying? You know them. So they'll let you get away with certain shit. Like, you'd be like, that's a fucked up call. They'll let it slide. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you take it over the board, you know what I'm saying, where you, you calling them a bitch-ass nigga or all, all this shit. Like, what they say? Bitch-ass nigga, right? Like, Whoa. When you get to that, that's what it is. Can't did you guys see the ref point though, Perk? You, did you see the ref when he teed him up first? He, like, he pointed kind of in Draymond's face. I would imagine he does not. Draymond didn't love that, like how he was pointing. It was real demonstrative. Kind well, of AJ like saying the ref's to trying to embarrass him. Yeah, whoa. Instigate. What? But AJ, we don't we don't know what he said to the ref. And Before then, this. You have a yeah. lot. Like, Dr Draymond wouldn't have tried this with a with an OG referee. Like, a Tony. Do you know Brooks. that ref, Perk? No, I, I don't. I don't. He came in the league after me. Can so. Steph do anything? Like, obviously there he's trying to, like, call the ref. Down. Is there away. anything he can do? But look at his face. He was about to fight him, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he was fighting him. There wasn't allowed to fight him. Yeah. Would have loved to punch him in the face like he did pull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That ref right there. You know, his hair but, slicked back. But, that look ref. At, yeah. but look at Draymond would have loved to put his fist mm -hmm. right through front of face yep. to where hairline is. Exactly. Yeah, that's but, what he would have liked. But look at his face like he's exhausted. It was Steph or Steph. Yeah. And I, I didn't I didn't play with, you know, so many Hall of Famers. Like I didn't I didn't watch Shaq get on refs. I didn't watch KG get on refs. I didn't watch Paul Ray. Like and refs would give you a pass because it's a respect thing that is there. Kobe, when we didn't been in the NBA finals, he didn't got into it with refs, but they know when to take it there and when not to take it there. Right? And the refs understand them too, I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. In the moment, not happy. We get it. Okay, mm -hmm. and you're done. Okay, let's out. move along. Get it out. And then sometimes it's like you're in the wrong. What you're saying is completely out of line. Yeah. And then that's kind of the – the so to AJ's question, I don't know if there's an answer, AJ, because I think situations are situational mm -hmm. there. Sure. Let's stay in the basketball, shall we? This is the worst uh, shooting technique I've ever seen. Why is this on TV? How am I able to watch this from the foul? What is this? What happened? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What is and that? I don't know. And for a guy that, you know, shot about 65% mm -hmm. for his career, I don't know what that is. I, like, you can't be in the like, NBA. You're in the NBA shooting like that. How's that happen? How do we get there? How do we I don't, get you know what's sad is that Mason Plumley for the Clippers, right? Right there, yep. He actually shoot with his left hand, with his off hand, and he shoot better than this. How come more people aren't doing like the granny style shot? You know, these guys that suck. <laughs> How come they don't granny style? I don't... Because uh, I run a granny style like that. Yeah. For who sure. Is, who is he working with? Right. That's a good question. Yeah. They did this to Markel Fultz, too. Yeah. Where he was doing like the... the clutch. He actually had like a... You think boom. he's... Maybe he's in the middle of a transition right now because they're working the... Like Tom, a swing change in golf. Tommy yeah. Mansky. No, Tommy no, 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 Mansky. You know, he goes, boom, <laughs> yeah. to here. Uh -huh. To there, yep. maybe he's just at this portion of the transition. Could be. So mm -hmm. he doesn't want to mess up what he's training at. This is not the final product. No. no. This is no, just no, the, no, right. this is the middle not. of learning how to actually shoot. They're stuck in this because you don't want to waste any reps no. in your training. Yep. <clears throat> how much are you guys shooting free throws at practice, though? You know, like obviously oh. in high school, it's like, hey, you end every practice, you got to make 20 or whatever. No, all the, all the coaches that from Doc Rivers, Scott Brooks, all the coach, Ty Lue, they'll tell you, like, 
make 100 free throws before you leave. So you'll team up with a guy after practice and, you know, you'll take turns making 10 apiece and you'll make 100 before you leave. It's just like anything. What was your percentage? I mean, you know. What happened? About 65 was pretty good for a big fella. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's yeah. not bad. So they said, they said, Perk, I need you to make 100 free throws before you leave. You said, I got dinner tonight. Yeah. You said, hey, we're going to be here. We're going to be here all day. I was, ma- I was making them. Okay, so what changed? Just the game, tired, exhaustion? I mean, you know, if you don't get to the free throw line a lot, like I wasn't touching the ball, so I wasn't averaging like 10 free throw mm-hmm. attempts a game. Got it, got it. I was only averaging like maybe one and a half or two, so I wasn't getting there often. So it was like when I did, maybe go one for two, mm-hmm. two for two every now and then. How was the – what was it? Do we have any pre-shot routines? Oh yeah, well, J- sure. Jason Kidd did the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. whole thing. Yeah, There's guys lining up off center now. I, think. I mean, yeah. you mm-hmm. gotta, you know, what I mean, back. like so dumb. In the middle of the floor, okay. they have a nail, what they call a nail, right at the free throw line. I learned this that you put your, I put my right foot on the nail. Okay. You get a nice wide base. You're looking at your target. Uh huh. Taking you three dribbles, yep. or whatever it is your routine is, and you lining it up and you giving it a chance. Yeah. So you were three dribbles. Yeah. Did they have? What if they were good? Same timing. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. And in your head, you're like, we're not thinking about anything but these dribbles right now. But why am I thinking about dribbling right now? Well, I got to shoot it now. Oh no. And then, it's, a, it's a rhythm. What was the miss? Short or long? My misses were always short. But it was on. T- it was on target. Because is that because your hands are so? So damn big and that ball feels so small in her? No, I just, I mean, you know, I just didn't have that, you know, enough wiggle in my shoulders. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> if you notice all great shooters, they have a wiggle about themselves, right? Like you look at Kevin Durant, he has a wiggle about him, right? Like he's loose. Like Steph, Steph Curry. Steph actually he's lo- does Right, yeah. right. He's loose. And then you look at Braun, that's why Braun has never been a great free throw shooter. But you look at Kobe, you look at Michael Jordan, like they had the wiggle, like. It was just like – Just was, build. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like scal Like Giannis, yeah. no matter yeah. how much – like Giannis could work at it, but he would never be a great free throw shooter. It's Unless – It's too jack. Why aren't we Jackie Moon in this thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jackie Moon. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? What's your problem, Perk? I'm they went to the Mega Bowl. Yeah. I'm just saying. The Flint Tropics made it to the Mega Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Nobody ever talks about that. But why don't we just try every like when Ben Simmons – Oh my God! Could not shoot a basketball I, for whatever reason. He, he, it's like, how come somebody didn't just go? Hey, he was allergic to the basket. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yep. he was. Mm-hmm. He was allergic to the Genuinely. basket, and I don't know what happened or where his confidence got lost. But it, 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 was, it was on bad. the internet, I think. Yeah, the but, internet is where he lost his confidence. Oh. But it was because the jokes they were saying, per, they were rude on there to him. I, I mean, for good reason. But, know, but the problem I have with Ben Simmons, a guy like Ben Simmons, is I think. He loves what the game of basketball has to offer and not actually love the game mm-hmm. of basketball, right? So you got guys that, that love the game and you got guys that love what the game brings to them. Oh, yeah. We got that issue in the NFL, too. Yeah. We got a lot of people that are excited to put in their ex-bio member of the whatever NFL team but don't necessarily love what it takes to actually remain that particular person. Mm-hmm. That happens in the NBA, I assume, at a much higher clip because – don't you guys – you guys kind of know when you're in high school who's going to make it. got guaranteed money. contracts too. Yeah, yes, guaranteed contract, guaranteed money. That's part of it. But yep. else, I think like in high school you guys know who's probably going to – right? In but, a small group that's probably going to make it. Yeah, but you – but it's so much competition out there right now with the international players that you really don't know. Oh, okay. You really mm. don't know no more. You don't know like how these – you know, the GMs are feeling about you no more, especially if you're a smaller player, right? If you're – Six two, six four, and now all of a sudden six two small. Yeah, compared to what they have overseas, like we looked into the big three rosters. Yep. Uh, hey. Yeah. What about it? A lot of size. Wait, well, I didn't know because we after the show we did a full on like okay, let's say Caitlin does do yeah. the five million dollars to the big three because it's five million bucks. Now I believe Portnoy has offered ten million dollars playing intramural basketball with him. Okay, I also saw that. Okay, which ten million bucks? Smart move. I mean, that's probably the one. I mean, you do yeah. for being honest. I, mean, I, I think Portnoy was gonna take that a shot one. at the big three, kind of with that whole thing, mm-hmm. but like also <laughs> ten million bucks, ten million bucks play basketball. We started going through like the rosters of these big three. This is the 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 three headed monsters: six ten, six six, six eight, six four, six nine, 
And then the coach, 6'7". The coach is 6'7". Well, that's not the only one. Though. Go, to, go to the next team. Go to the, yeah, three's company. Let's scroll through this thing. 6'2". Okay, short. 6'9", 6'6", 6'7". Tony Allen doesn't have it. Read full oh, by. Okay, no. he's tall. Tony six four. Four. <laughs> Julie Wright, 6'8". And then the coach, 6'5". The coach is 6'5". Go to the next team, the Aliens. I'm sure they're real short. 6'3", 6'9", 6'5", 6'7", 6'6", 6'7", 6'10", is the coach. <laughs> so we're talking literally everybody on the court is – I did not know this no, about yeah. the big three. 6'3", six, short. 6'10", 6'4", 6'8", 6'9", 6'7", is the Fair. coach. Mm -hmm. We're talking every single human involved with the big three are gigantic human beings. So whenever we start thinking about like 6'6", 6'9", 6'7", 7-foot, I mean, we don't, the, the, Gary Payton's small, right? Yeah. You see him, 6'4". He's yeah. all like, NBA guys, too. Ba basketball people are so and tall. You have to be so tall to play hoops. So Caitlin Clark, we looked up, she's 6' foot tall, she's listed. She would, I, we didn't look at every single person, remember us? She would certainly be the shortest For sure. in the entire big three should be the most paid, should be the one that everybody's coming to see. But that would be, I mean, that'd be a whole right. different ball game. Has, yeah. has anybody, has you guys like really locked in and watched the big three? Okay, so do we, you, I've seen a couple. Do weekends. you un, do you understand how physical the big three is? Underneath or where at? No, all across the board. Like these are retired players, right? That still have the love for, for basketball, the love for the game, also are getting paid. And the the level of competition is crazy. So if she right? was to go in there and have success, it would be it'd be a wild. Yeah, it'd be a wild. Do, perk, like perk, how could how would she do perk being uh, you know oversized by that much? By everybody, see, like yes. even the coaches. It, it, I mean, what would happen? It, it wouldn't be great. It people, be, people on the internet are it, saying she would score zero points. Some people, yeah. but I also, say, we don't know. We don't. Yeah. Know. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say zero because she is a shooter. She has Feels range, good. right? Like mm -hmm. so, you got to think. It's going to be – she's going to be on – she has teammates, so guys are going to be able to drive and create and, you know, people have to help. So she'll be able to get shots off. I'm just talking about the level of physicality that, like, we're talking about park. Like, this is – it brings me back to Sprout Park in Beaumont, Texas, when I used to go play one-on-one with, with the OG named Cadillac Red, and he would walk <laughs> up with a cigarette in his mouth and a 40, and, you know, he would bust my ass. Yeah, they want to keep it <laughs> slow. It, they want to yeah, keep it slow, too, yeah. so there's a lot of yeah. – yeah. So, like, the more we thought about it, we're like, Caitlin's got to do this for $5 million bucks. That's a lot of money, especially the WNBA salary cap for the whole team mm -hmm. is $1.4 million. So she'd be making three times the salary cap for the whole team – in one year playing 10 weeks of big three basketball. But the more we look into it, it's like, this will be a real study here now. But what? Because she's like best in the world. Mm -hmm. I saw Ice Cube on yesterday, mm -hmm. right? And I, want, I wanted to know the, about the big three women's league. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because there's a lot of extra maybe, that we know. Yeah, a lot, and they're still because, on TV. Around. Because right now, like women's basketball, like, She's a bona fide megastar. Mm -hmm. International. Like she, yeah, she didn't pass the superstar status. Caitlin is a bona fide megastar. So, like, maybe is this the first step to, you know, Ice Cube is a businessman. Yeah, because you got Angel Reese is a well-known. You, you yep. start thinking about who potentially with and, this young group of stars, Juju's on her way. You guess, maybe well, they could have yeah, their own and, league. And, the guess, big three. and guess what? Now it puts pressure on the WNBA mm -hmm. to up their game and to up their salary. So the thing about Caitlin is, just as a casual watcher, the way she moves and gets shots off, phenomenal. That's why she is, and where she shoots from yeah. is why everybody and is she's, and plays she's everywhere. A, savage. And she is a dog. Yeah, yeah. complete she dog. She is a dog. Yes. She yells at and the I, refs a I'm lot. I'm not talking about a Labrador. She is a rock. Hey, hey. Yeah. 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 yeah, fun to watch. Been fun to watch. Still but fine. once you start looking into it, it's like, okay, we would learn a lot quickly there in that big three. Would the big three, the other OGs that are in the big three, would they understand, like, hey, these arenas are filled up for the first time? They yeah. wouldn't care. <laughs> okay. They wouldn't give a damn. Well, no, the 6'2 was Mario Chalmers, and the 6'3 was Barbosa, who played, like, 15 years. World Champions, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, and he, he D's up, so, like. It would be Keep fascinating. It would be very fascinating to watch. But the internet, you know, as we look more and more into it, as we looked into it, it's like big three isn't just like 
You know, because you start thinking about the leagues. You got the NBA, obviously. Mm -hmm. you got the G League. You got Europe leagues. Mm -hmm. uh, you got like uh, what's the Drew League? Yeah, Drew League. Yeah. You got the Drew the League. Rucker Park League. Nike, got, Nike oh, College. League. College. Yeah. That's yeah. IMG leagues. I think are taking place. Yeah, the like, there's a lot of leagues of basketball. Yeah. And when you think of Big Three, you're not thinking like, hey, this is a top four basketball league. But then you start looking at the rosters. It's like. Everybody, uh, actually, these guys are fucking huge. <laughs> 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 it's all guys Top you know from the NBA. These That's guys the are world. huge. So, <laughs> it would be awesome. And Five million bucks would yeah. be awesome for she'd, us as well. She'd probably be able to end up figuring it out, but also the switch from playing with a women's ball to a men's ball. Oh, yeah. Like that yeah. oh, that's yeah. probably from one day to the next. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. A whole all right, let's get to a break. Speaking of basketball, we'll have Reese Davis join us on the other side talking about tonight's launch of the Sweet 16. One game's tipping off 10.09 Eastern. Come on. Best one. It's Thursday. Come on. What are we doing, man? We Don't look me like that. We're going to be staying up. Who is? Because we go watch it. <laughs> Hell, Mark yeah, Hell yeah, Hell yeah, Mark, yeah, Mark Caboli ain't staying up. <laughs> I tried to watch Ricky Stenicky last night. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, what happened? I watched like three quarters and fell asleep. <laughs> three quarters? <laughs> fell asleep. I think that's, that's what's going to happen with this Iowa was. State Illinois game tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go as far as I possibly can. It's a late I mean, day. the other one's at 9:45. I'm not gonna be able to have any sound on too because the the lovely bride is gonna be passed out for sure, and she doesn't need to hear. Bang! Yeah, no, right. She, she's not. <laughs> a, so, how can we not get a six o'clock in there? Six seven. How about nine. this? Fuck our show. Put a two o'clock in there. Boom. Sure. No, I agree. Don't Put a two o'clock in there. Day. They have no <laughs> idea. We got, we got, there is no <laughs> opening day. We don't got you a baseball know. game till four either. Let's get to a break. Baseball stinks. 162 games. Drop that thing down. Maybe I'll be interested. What if they did one? One game. How fucking, That's what they do. That's cool. what that becomes. The baseball yeah, to get in. The wild card. Yeah. It just becomes a one game. They got rid of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was the only good thing you guys well, had. That was so Best cool. Three. Best three now. You ever watch baseball? Oh. Only in the playoffs, postseason. Amen. And that's because the Astros. Now, Perk yeah, knows. Postseason baseball. Yeah, postseason baseball is, 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 is like that. Absolutely. It's like that. Boom. That's because you're a Houston. <laughs> yeah, when your team is good, postseason baseball is. Yeah. Well, the Pirates are getting good. You, you yeah. heard them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're on Interest, their way. They're interesting. I'm pumped to see Skeens in April. I'm going. And I, I'm not going <laughs> to be buying any Chapman. I'm not buying any Chapman merch. will be electric you that much. this year, too. Hong Kong. He's got a live arm. Live arm. Active hands. Yeah, Let's get yeah. to a break. What was Al about? Why is he on our team? Uh, He's a big fucking weirdo, but he throws, he throws hard. Yeah, he throws 100. So. <laughs> it's a weird video of him. What's he doing? Oh, he's milking Cox. Joe. Might be AI. Pong They're pong. trying to make him look bad because he's Pittsburgh yeah, Pirates. Good track. There's no way yeah. he would do that. AI Let's get to a break. Even make that video. No. Reese Davis on the other side, maybe. We kind of blew through when it was supposed to start, and I think he's in the middle of travel, so who knows if he's still going to be available or not. But we'll call him on the other side of this break to talk about the Sweet 16, and we'll wrap up this glorious Sweet Perk Thursday. Perk, it's been awesome having you. Perk, oh, you've yeah. been awesome. Right. I'm oh, looking yeah. forward to next Thursday. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Today's not over, Perk. Live in a moment. You said it about Draymond Green. We're here yeah. right now. <laughs> Let's worry about this fucking Thursday. Be Thursday. here. I am worried about this fucking Thursday. No, you sound like Bill <laughs> Self. Yeah. You no. sound like the Kansas coach. I've been thinking about next year's team for the last fucking month. <laughs> what? That's what you said. I, you know, I can't wait till next Thursday. <laughs> we got we got another 40 minutes. Oh, well, let's go. Well, I'm going to go to the bathroom. We got... <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All right, be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. 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 Zion makes his debut. Everybody's watching that game because of Zion. You sold out the Smoothie King Center because of Zion, and you introduce him second. Zion LeBron Red Panda? This is going to be pretty wild, I think. It's like one of the most electric moments in NBA history. Zion! Will you <laughs> Let's go. This is the order it's always in. Um, so it's been Ingram, Zion, Favors, uh, Ball, then Hong. So I have to go Zion. Half get it. And I get those cats for me. Like yeah. For Red Panda? Oh, okay. I actually built my office so Red Panda could fit in it. Can't intro Zion list. He's on the fucking wall there, though. Everybody knows why we're here. He's 45 yards big, right across the street. The highlight of my life. 
Come on. There's no way this should be humanly possible. Nope. No. But what is impossible 
It's I'm possible. Yes. Whoa. And whenever you're talking about Red Panda, you're talking about the biggest I'm in the history of I'm possible. Yes. What Hell she yeah. does every single night is not supposed to happen. Yes. Uh -uh. There's no way you're supposed to be able to accomplish this. No feat. way. No. AJ Hawk, what you say? How many people can do this? None. Just Red Panda. Five bowls. <laughs> Listen, I'm just curious. I noticed that in every single one of those pictures you took, you're wearing the same suit. So I'm just curious, did, did were you only at the Combine one day? Did you only work one day? I mean, you talk about how you're the hardest working guy ever. You're there one day? Like, what, what's going on? Well, I don't know, Ty. I mean, are we in Milan at the fucking fashion show? I'm there for work, asswipe, okay? So, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to go and play grab ass with people, oh, hey, look at my, my Versace suit. Look at my, you know, listen. All right, very simple. Yes, I wore the same suit and, uh, and shirt combo and tie combo every single day. You ever heard of Steve Jobs? Okay. Turtleneck every single day. Take one decision out of your day. It's a very beautiful, nice suit. $79.99 off the rack at Macy's. Okay, very, very Ooh. dependable. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm not there uh, trying to, you know, get all the girls to look at me and say, oh, geez, Mad Mel, this guy's fucking sexy. I'm there to let these NFL GMs and pro personnel, you know, staff know, hey, this is what you've got to do to win a Super Bowl. I mean, the fact that you didn't even ask that question tells me how big of a dipshit you are and how much, just, honestly, just how clueless you are. So I won't be taking any fucking questions from you for a long time, oh, my oh, friend. Oh, jeez. You know what, as a matter of fact, fuck this, I'm done. Okay, I've given you guys, no, this is bullshit. Whoa. Fuck you guys. Whoa. What? Whoa. What did I oh, say? What the? Ty, way to go. Come is Matt Mel still there? You know, I, mean, I don't got to do this. You know, they act like I don't got anything to do. I mean, I got hours and hours of film I could be looking at. These fucking assholes are treating me, you know, like it's a stand-up comedy special. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm fucking sick of it. Okay? I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. Fuck them. Whoa. Gee. Uh, sorry. Ty. He's still... Look how you made Mad Mel feel. It's an honest question. I thought it was a good conversation. No, I, yeah. You did attack him a little bit. You attacked him a little bit. I think he overreacted, but that's classic Mad Mel. I think we can, you know, be, besides the way that thing abruptly ended. My, what was that all about? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, professionalism maybe, you know, just a, a tad bit. But sorry, right. draft season's Mad Mel season. Jalen Milrow often wears his own branded apparel reading LANK across the front. It's an acronym that stands for Let a Naysayer Know. Being told by his former offensive coordinator, that Bill O'Brien. That is not what I thought. Is that not what you thought? Boy, let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. Of course. The professional's right in the middle of his lead. That's all right. I just keep I thought going. you almost lost me. Hey, man. Hey, man. It got real tight up here as you were. I was watching that. Reese, you were too smooth with that. I thought it was going down. I thought it was going down out here. Oh, sorry about it. Let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer no. say no. That's what we thought the whole time. That's what we all thought. Hey, why? Let's go. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this sweet perk Thursday, March 28th, 2024. Hour three of the program starts now. Sports! That's A.J. Hawk, a man who is the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Sweet shirt. Hey, thank you, Pat. You too. I see a fire in the sky, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's a little higher Those glyphics. cave drawings? Hey, well, they're hieroglyphics, Tony. They're, uh, it's not cave drawings, per se. They're hieroglyphics. One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. 14-year NBA vet Kendrick Big Perk. Parkins is here Hell yeah. and joining us now live from a car in which he's trying to get to an airport so that he can travel so it'll be quick. Uh, one of the voices of college football, 
Feels like we should talk to him afterwards with the video that I'm seeing right now. Yeah, uh, Reese, we will talk to you afterwards. Reese Davis had terrible service. Yeah, right yeah I didn't even know. I, I mean, I just saw it look like he was a uh, <laughs> like a crayon painting. Yeah, right? in yeah. a fish tank. Yeah, that's what it looked like there. So we will save that for late. There was a time period, a window where he was going to be in a car to airport. Sure. That we powered right through. It happens. Try to thread the needle in. We tried. We thought maybe right maybe the the calendar schedule would be off a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. Reese Davis is. Yeah. Perfectly on time. That's of course. why we love him. He's going, but that's why we love him. He's going through the security, and we'll talk to him whenever he gets in on the other side. Sweet 16 tonight, AJ. It's a big deal. Opening day today, big deal. What are your thoughts yeah. on sports really having a big day on this particular Thursday? Hey, I don't know what it's like uh, in your guys' algorithm, in your world, but I don't hear a whole lot about opening day where I'm from. Nope. Do you? <laughs> We well, don't have a team in Columbus. Yeah, no, 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 no. Got this, I'm, I'm the Reds fan, and the, there's a lot of Indian or Guardians fans. Whoa! 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 Oh, man, you misogynistic pig! <laughs> bye, bye, <laughs> pal. <laughs> I don't know if that's mis- uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm a red not. It's just the first word that popped. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit me off the screen with this. Hope you enjoyed your media career because it's over. God. That's it. That's By it. the way, let's check guys. what the ump on there. He yes, did. He yeah. did. Yeah. Yes, he yes, did. Yes, he did. You did I to finish it? Yeah, yeah, you did. did. I don't know. I don't Anyways, know. the Commanders of Cleveland. Yes, they are <laughs> very good baseball players. People love them. People love them. What a different time it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chief Wahoo. Who's Skins playing for this year? He plays Who? for the Indianapolis Indians. Whoa! Oh, that's not name. Okay. That's, that's, that's the team name. That's the team name. You did that. That's still the team name. Oh, that is my God. That's their name. That's their name. It's never changed either. They have not changed it. Nope. Indianapolis will not change that one. And they're not changing a lot. AJ, do you have anything to say about Paul Skins' team? I mean, yeah, I can't wait to watch them play in seven years when they pull them up to the big league. No, no, it's no, not even no. one month is what Jet Pass is. <laughs> yeah. And you don't know start baseball. Them <laughs> start them day one. Why wouldn't you start them day one? You're not going to yeah. ruin them. We don't understand. You because you're trying, you lose to, control delay of the, them. You're trying oh, okay. to delay the inevitable, which is the day he says, I, get me the fuck out of Pittsburgh. <laughs> I want to go somewhere that's going to give me $300 million dollars mm. so you get another year out of him. And if it means... You know, oh. Pittsburgh's going to give him three hundred million. Bingo! Dollars. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> the Pirates, or the Pittsburgh or the, Pirates, the city of Pittsburgh is going to come together and get three hundred million dollars as a. As there a might city. be an NIL deal. Who knows? That, that's start the only fundraising way. now. Well, what about the Zambelli's just going to start donating the fireworks? That casino could cover it. Hey, Glass House is back there too. By the way, who? If, if that guy thinks the Fenway Group's going to pay any Penguins, he's got another thing. All right, we're not moving to a different sport. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of what AJ's oh, talking the about. The Fenway Sports Group is a problem right now. They ain't paying nobody in any sport. Isn't LeBron a part of that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's it's bad. Even the Red Sox. I, 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 as a Fenway Sports Group member with with these Boston Red Sox, yeah, they are, uh, they're all in it for the money, it, it feels like, to what? be honest with you. Mm. Yeah. Liverpool's the same. They only buy players when they sell players so they don't lose money. Big Bear, can you talk to LeBron about this? About paying His players. ownership group is allegedly no. cheap. Actually, players. funny enough, Le that's LeBron since is they cheap. brought him in. <laughs> What's that? LeBron is cheap. <laughs> no, I saw him. He had that Escalade in high school. That yeah. was a big conversation. The Hummer. Oh, yeah, the Hummer. He sorry. had the Hummer. Oh, nice Hummer. Too. Sweet. He's Fantastic. fucking cheap. He's like, <laughs> like JJ yeah. Reddick's paying for that wine uh, and that? Uh, I mean, just the listen. How cheap? How, how cheap are we talking? You were talking like, like Bill McComas? Uh, I'm talking like. Whoa. 10% like gratuity at the <laughs> oh, fucking steakhouse. No. Oh, that's not good, bro. Whoa, come on. Whoa. No, that's not, not cheap. Not, We're not, We're not, not, a, not a penny high. <laughs> <laughs> not a, not a penny. penny. <laughs> and, and we'll get mad. What you doing? Hey, man, like, no, no. So he's he's been this way his whole life? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's tight as hell. There's some people that are like that. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, well, you know, I don't come from much, so I, I want to keep it all. And I'm like, yeah, I don't come from much, so as soon as I see it, I'm like, I want to, I like to go get the shit. <laughs> I'd like to be able to go get the shit that we have uh, mm -hmm. been watching on the television. Getting money whenever you don't have a lot of it and then just being thrusted into a world is not easy. You know, and a lot of people make fun of the NFL broke documentary yeah. mm -hmm. that said like 80% of retired NFL players would go broke after five years or something of leaving the NFL because their money management and obviously everybody started mocking players for good reason a lot of money disappearing mm -hmm. but it's not as easy to manage as I think a lot of people expect especially whenever you're seeing it for the first time that goes to another credit about LeBron like 
LeBron's been in the public eye since he's a teenager. Yeah. And there's never been seeming. Now, he said some dumb shit at certain times throughout his. I think we all can agree on that. We've all done it. Mm -hmm. But, like, the way he's kind of handled everything, seemingly, he's been professional since he's a teenager. Well, he, he has the right people around him. I could say that. And, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is that when, when, when athletes retire, the biggest thing is the adjustment, right? Like, having to really face life. Like, you got to... You got to do life. Yeah, you got to mm -hmm. do life. Like, it's no more financial advisor, what you need them for. Like, you're paying your own bills. You got to start living, living differently. Like, it's an it's a adjustment period. Yeah, LeBron might never retire, though. That's what we're learning. Mm -hmm. And also, service industry, let's give a look. LeBron. Yeah, at least 20. Yeah, he's yeah, not going to be happy. Perk yeah, yeah. just said that. Uh, no. What are you talking he's about? He's my guy, but he, he's tight as hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about some stuff that happened around pro days here for, you know, big name. Michael Penix allegedly ran between a 446 and a 452. I don't think anybody mm -hmm. expected that out of a 40 yard dash from Michael Penix. Two ACLs he had in his college experience. Obviously, started in Indiana, transferred mm -hmm. up to Washington with Kalen DeBoer whenever he went up there. Prolific career. Took the Washington Huskies to a national championship in the last year of the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything he did up there was magnetic. Brought that entire program back. I don't think any of us expected a 4-4 or a four, low 4-5 four, for Michael Penix. Good for him. Great for him. Yeah, with the way the Look how smooth he looked, too. He looked yeah. very smooth on that run as well. But also, when you're if you're going to draft him in the first round to be your Hopeful franchise quarterback. Do you care whether he runs a four four or a four six? Two ACLs. Four, seven. Look, no, but I'm just saying. I think the conversation is: is he durable or whatever? Like, that was a smooth gait. Very, I very mean, smooth. Knee drive, arm swing. To be able to move that fast, it's like modern technology, and he's young. I think he kind of checked a lot of boxes there with that forty. Good for him. Proud of him. But this throw. God bless Among America. a couple others against Texas down the sideline have the scouts saying this is the guy of this particular draft, and it's like every pro day that takes place, everybody's stock goes up. And Penix did it running the 40. J.J. McCarthy did it with some of his throws mm -hmm. and how cool he looked. Caleb Williams was wrestling with his teammates, so people like him. Drake May, we assume, is going to do something absurd at his pro day. This is the Penix absurdity. He is a 4-4 potential, which is bananas. Now, mm -hmm. we're talking 4-4s, 40s. We talked about a Welch guy mm -hmm. who is a rugby player. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. We said he was uh, Irish, and I think somebody said he was French potentially because of his name. I could see that. That's all. He's from <laughs> Wales. Oh, okay. okay. He's sure. from Wales. Happy we got that corrected. That's real journalism. Okay. That's yep. on us. Love the Welch. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. They got Lo robbed. Yes, they did in soccer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, right? Gareth mm -hmm. Bale. Yeah, Luis Ruiz Zamet. Is a Welsh fella okay. from Wales. Speaks Welsh, yeah. I would assume. Mm -hmm. Class Maybe, proud of which him. Is classified as British. Yeah, just pretty much a very rough yeah. English. Chris, uh, Christian Bale, also sound like? Welsh. Okay. I don't really have that in my bag. It's a. Whoa. It's a different. What's it one. sound unique? Like? What's an Irish person sound like if you had to? They all kind of like English, Irish. Australian, yeah, Scottish, it's all the, Scottish. It's all the same. The Scots have a uh, like when Drew McIntyre grabs that microphone, mm -hmm. you can really tell. Becky Lynch, mm -hmm. obviously, yep. very Irish in that. And then Rhea Ripley, Australian. Yep. You know, there's, it's weird how one language can be taken in so many different directions. Conor McGregor is Irish. Very strong. The Liverpool type, where like Patty the Patty, Scouser. Yeah. Yeah. Scouser. How'd that happen? You think? Like he's from Texas, mm -hmm. speaks differently than. Just like America. Yeah, but how did it happen? Mm. Great question. Settlers. Wish had the answer. Uh, where the settlers are from in Europe, how their English developed mm. based on where they came mm -hmm. in the United States. I'm just guessing. I'm so how they like, learned how did English? The first yeah, yeah. That like, ever they're, spoke. They're, how did it sound? Yeah, what's the first English? It had the to be very the very first English. Ever. One, two, three, right? Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. the for sure. <laughs> yep. Fo, fo, yeah. the the England. Yeah, Fo so never set on the British Empire. So it was everywhere. Yeah. So them forcing people to learn the English language, With how they accent. go about learning the English language. Yeah. The king's English, if you will. Is how we get accents and shit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Checks mm -hmm. out. But how does Pennsylvania sound so vastly different from one side of the state to the other? Very different. That is the kind of crazy part. And then if you drive a couple miles south, you got a real slow, mm -hmm. like how does... And then, I don't know. It, drive a couple miles it's, like that, it's like that in Texas. Houston, Houston people sound way different than Dallas people. 
And I, we, I don't know why. What do you mean? Just the draws different? I mean, just the whole, like, yeah, like uh, just everything. You can tell immediately. Yeah. Okay. If you're from Dallas and if you're from the H Town. H Town, little, little slower? Yeah, screwed up. Chopped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got it. I mean, we, yeah. we all experienced it. Shout out to the chopped and screwed era of music that made its way yeah. to Pittsburgh. We were all trying to get down to Paul Wall and the boys. <laughs> DJ Screw, I think. Yeah. 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 Slim Thug. Yeah. Slim Thug. Yeah. Uh, motherfucker. Yeah. That was awesome to say. Yeah. That was a cool thing. But why does everybody say, I don't know. That's that's a weird, I would like somebody to get to the bottom of that. Yeah. Because there's a chance yeah. it was just one person at town saying, we fucking talk like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, there's one person that sucks that talks differently. Who's that? Freaking Austin Theory. That guy's the worst. Was that Atlanta? <laughs> what? Austin Theory? What? I think he doesn't. I don't even know oh, if he man. has an he, he, I don't know what it is, but it fucking grinds my gears. I'll Austin Theory? The way yeah. What's yeah. Like? It, sound, down. it sounds like, oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, that's how it sounds, Hawk. Okay. When was the last time okay. you heard That's what he sounds like? Fucking never. Nailed it. I, Nailed the last it. time I heard him? <laughs> Yeah. It was when uh ooh. Uh it was when Stone Cold fucking broke his neck basically and then he started crying like a baby. Okay, it feels like you kind of shoehorned <laughs> Austin. Maybe I shoehorned him in, but maybe Is I Is that just... because he posted on his Instagram story flipping you off calling you a There's a chance. Oh. And now that we're in Mania season, I'm just thinking about Mania. I'm thinking about wrestling and then Beat I think about ass. I think about who I want to kick, you know, whose ass I want to beat the most. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's Austin Theory. It's cuz the way he speaks. It, 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 bingo. Exactly why. Is it the words he says or just how? Both. How he looks. <laughs> all of them. Oh. What? He looks good. He <laughs> looks incredible. Jack. Incredibly good. That's, that's your Incredibly guy's Jack. opinion. How about he posted the other day? He I said, saw that the one. The goal has always been to look like the Iron Man yeah. suit. And then he, you <laughs> yeah. see him, he dies. Get it, asshole. Look at this. Look at this. Jeez. Yeah. Douche. Kind of walks out. What? Like <laughs> <laughs> Is he wrestling yeah, anymore? Dude. Was Are we taking an Arnold there, right? poster on the side? Are we taking shots of wrestlers right now? Poster is sick. What? what oh, who are you going after, Tone? Why, why, who do you got? J.D. McDuffie. What about J.D. McDonough? Jesus. He's poor Judgment Tony? Day. Jeez, he we. is over. I saw Careful, he Careful, Tony. Over. That is one of no Mommy's aura. children. Oh, oh, right, let's move along. You follow, did you see children. what The Rock did to Cody Rhodes the other night? <laughs> oh, oh gotta ask, her. You don't gotta know. ask everybody. You don't know. Gotta ask. Did you see it, AJ? You're gonna be asking for the next two years. <laughs> Look at you now. It's gonna be tough to keep track of the Mondays if I'm two years from now. Hey, did you see what Rock did to Cody Rhodes 104 weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't wanna know. You don't wanna know. Oh, oh. Look at this. Look at is that your, real rain? They bring rain to the him in the mouth. Look at your champion. It was real rain. It was, That's the Rock, oh, Kendrick no. Perkins. That's the Rock. Look at him. Man. He takes a. Cardio uh, weight belt. No. Does he always have that on? Just in case he no, needs to get under a bar? For Mama Rhodes. Yeah. Look at your hero, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> there is an easy way to remember, actually, this day. It was Caitlin Clark's last home game. This day. <laughs> that, this day. Oh, that. So forever you could say. Yep. Remember, remember okay. Caitlin Clark's last home, home game? game? Whenever the refs <laughs> oh, screwed over West what? Virginia, but Caitlin mm -hmm. dropped 32 or whatever mm -hmm. and had a night to kind of move forward in yeah. the NCAA tournament. Well, The Rock... Threw Cody Rhodes off his own bus. That was a real yeah. story. Made him bleed his own blood. Thought he was going to murder him there for a second, throw him off a balcony. Yeah. Mm. But he didn't. Look at that. That's blood. Ah! Huh? Okay. Come here, you piece of trash. <laughs> this is what happens. Perk, you ever watch wrestling? I do. You do? Yeah. Still? Yeah. When you're I six foot ten. You're a big guy. Like, I wonder, has there ever been any thought of maybe you being a wrestler? No. No. Oh. I'm too, I'm too, you know what? <laughs> I ain't ready for that. A little self pop uh, there. You were thinking yeah. in your head. Here, here it is. A hundred pounds. You know what I'm saying? Off. Mm -hmm. I might be ready for it. How old are you? Thirty nine. Oh, you still got nothing yeah. but time. Oh, yeah. Plenty. Yeah. Nothing but time. There's wrestlers wrestling 50, 60 years old. Oh, yeah, yeah, but but it's a certain type of athleticism that you have to have. Yes. Like the way you hit that damn home run, you took off with that nice stride around yeah. the right Thunderdome here. Arena. Yeah, thank you. And then you jumped on the stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That was that good plate. You know how long it would take me to get that shit right? <laughs> Why? Why would it take you? Just so everything. To run around the bases? To hit well, the, the first fuck, base? Yeah, the, the technique and then the finish. Okay. The finish. Big Park, you're an athlete. Yeah, you're a yeah, freaking. Don't ever forget it. Yeah, quick elite. elite. You're, you're an NBA champion. I appreciate this. Yeah. <laughs> Number three overall prospect coming out of high school. Hey, let's not forget. Don't let's not be forgetting who no. you are, Big Perk. Yeah, I, I yeah. know, I know, I know. You know, I guess being in the suit and tie. Yeah, kind of. You know. No, people are. 
You're letting these people get to you. The people are like, <laughs> Big Perk's just snoring into a microphone. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Don't let them get to you. Look at this. <laughs> oh, suck it, Detroit. <laughs> oh, bitch. <laughs> bitch. That's who you are. This is who you are. Ah. Like, get out. Little white. What's your what was your playing weight back in Boston? <laughs> Two seventy five. Little white. <laughs> was that little white right little there? Little white. Yep. It's a concept. Perk, you ever ripped the rim off the backboard like Shaq used to do? Mm, one time in high school. Oh, oh in high school one you were a weapon, yeah, huh? One time in high school. You ever break the backboard? Give me that shit, KD. <laughs> <laughs> KD was like, <laughs> you remember so that. I got to Oklahoma City. KD was like, you never block my shot, and I was like, oh, we got footage. <laughs> we got footage. <laughs> Wait, were you on the team when they played the Heat in the finals? That tip? Yeah. 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 They wouldn't have got deal without me. You know, <laughs> we had to Amen. go through the Lakers and yep. things of that nature, so it was cool. Hey, so you, um, were you ever a shooter? Like in high school, this is what you did the whole time you are underneath, just dominating people in high school? They called me Baby Shaq. Okay. So I broke all Shaq state records in Texas. He went to San Antonio Cole. Um, I averaged 29, 16, and 9. Nine. You, you, Is that you, blocks or assists? Blocks. You don't go to the Nine. university cash without dominating. Okay. My my record in Texas in three years, sophomore, junior, senior year, was 102 wins and three losses. That <laughs> won't be broken. How was the rest of the team? How was the rest of the team? They were pretty good. They were pretty good. Uh, one, of, one, of, one of my teammates went to BYU. Uh, had a great career at BYU, power forward. One of my guys went to Lamar University. He's now the assistant coach at the University of Texas basketball program. Hey, here so, we go. Yeah, Rock on so, him. yeah. So you know, we had some, we had some, you know, some, some success. What A? What A is that down in Texas? The school you went. To? Well, this one was four A. At, at that time, it capped off at five A. Mm -hmm. But now we have six A. Mm -hmm. They're doing that everywhere. I think. Yeah, yeah. Just making yeah. 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 another one. Did you ever get to play against Shaq? What in, uh, in the league? Yeah, when he was in Cleveland, mm -hmm. Shaq cracked my ribs. <laughs> What? Yeah, he cracked my ribs. <laughs> On purpose was that? Uh... So we was we was in the in the heat of the battle. We we're playing the Cleveland Cavaliers, and something happened in the paint. I fall on the ground. He fall on top of me. Oh. I got cracked ribs. Oh no! Damn. Worst shit of my life. Uh -huh. Just tape him up too. That's all. They, hey, how do you fix cracked ribs? You they don't just tape you. Yep. yep. Just gotta heal. Yeah, your bones will figure it out. <laughs> yeah. When oh. we don't. But th they don't oh, have goodness. they don't have that no more in the NBA. Guys jam their finger, they out for a week. <laughs> not you, though. They, no. Crack ribs. When did, it, no. when did it change, Perk? What happened? The money got bigger. You think the 65 game rule will you mean, kind of help that, or do you think that'll well, probably change? I, I mean, I thought the play-in tournament would help that because I thought maybe guys would be like, you yeah. know what, let's finish in this top six so that we don't have to put our, ourselves, you know, in this, you know, top ten and I thought it would bring, you know, the, the competition level up. I thought guys would compete and be available. But they had to put the 65-game rule in. And part of it is the players, but majority of it is the organization, right? Like, the organization get the schedule, and they're like, come here, Kawhi Leonard, come here, Paul George. I'm looking at this road trip. This game, you're out. Okay, so they're giving them options, basically. Yeah. They're giving them the excuse to be out. But but it was like, you know, they don't make them like they used to. You know, like, the reason that Minnesota and Kevin Garnett got a divorce was for the simple fact that Minnesota was tanking and KG had his jersey on and he was about to go out and he was ready to play. They wasn't going to make the playoffs. And somebody came in and was like, hey, KG, you're not playing tonight. He was like, what the fuck you mean I ain't playing tonight? I'm playing tonight. And it was like a whole blow up. And Kevin McHale comes in and is like, nah, KG, you out. You know, we go let these young guys rock. And that was the, that was it. Okay. So that's a different mindset a little bit. And, and, and like everybody keeps saying, oh, you know, they, they telling us this. Well, as a franchise guy, nobody could tell you what the hell to do. Like, if you want to play, you're going to play. Like, nobody is walking in and telling them Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers, that they're not playing if they want to play. Yeah, I agree. You can take that kind of into your own hands. Yeah. I didn't know that was happening in the NBA. And, you know, it seems like it has been happening for a mm -hmm. long time in certain situations, and guys have been able to say no to it. Do you think, uh, and you talked about you and Shaq, and Shaq ended up underneath you, and Zach Eady here at Purdue. Yeah. And Kenny the Jet Smith is like, hey, this is an old-school center here. So in football, 
it used to be power football. You know, AJ, that forehead right there, that guy, AJ Hawk, <laughs> has just, it was downhill on Yo. the fullback, <laughs> mm -hmm. just like in the NFC North, just banging. That's what football used to be. Then as people started getting more creative on the offensive side and the defensive rules started changing, everybody started opening up. So now we're throwing, we're throwing, the game's getting softer. But now coaches are taking advantage of the fact that everybody's gotten smaller at the linebacker position so that they could go side to side, and now power football is coming back. Mm -hmm. A lot of the teams that end up having success were teams that were able to play power football. Is that going to happen? With basketball, like, is there going to be a power like Joker? Seemingly, whenever the playoffs happen, power basketball. Yeah, they're down in there, right? Like Zach Eady. Do we think he has an NBA opportunity, an NBA chance? We hell think? yeah. Okay, good. hell yeah. And That's great news. This is something that GMs don't need to overthink, right? Back to back Player of the Year, right? And and, and I mean, he's a walking double double in college. He's seven fucking four, yeah, mm -hmm. three hundred pounds with a feathery touch around the basket. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to be a starter, but you can't tell me that, and this is no shade, right? No shade whatsoever. Oh, it sounds like shit is but, being talked to somebody. But you can't tell me that Zach Eady can't do what Nurkic for the Phoenix Suns mm -hmm. is doing. Yep. You can't tell me he can't do what Big Zubak for the Clippers is doing. Like, we're not. Ex I'm not expecting him to be Wimby. I'm not expecting him to be Anthony Davis. We don't expect him to be Giannis, but that's only a select few, mm -hmm. right? You still got 25 other teams like that needed that need that void field, and so we were on here what two weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. And we were talking about our guy Garza. Yep, Luca yeah. Garza. And why didn't he get an opportunity? All of a sudden, he get an opportunity, and what did he do? Ball yeah, 12 out. points in he like ball, 15 minutes. Yes. Luca Garza. Yes. Oh yeah, it was in the NBA. It was yes. like the day after we talked about for, it with for Perk. the Timberwolves, right? It was no Rudy Gobert. It was no Carl Anthony Towns. And then all of a sudden, he get his opportunity, and he go out there and he fucking ball out. That's all it takes. So Edie just needs the same situation. He just need an opportunity. They need to win. You know, there's a chance they win. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This Purdue team is dominant. And I, love, and I love the way his coach took up for him after the game, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. The gospel. Coach sticking up for him? Yeah. What about big guys? What did he say about him? I don't think I heard it. It was more along the lines of, you know, a reporter asked him, and he was like, hey, you know, a lot of criticism co coming towards Zach Eady way about, you know, basically he's just tall. And he was like, whoever's saying that, basically they don't know fucking oh, basketball. Oh, yeah, I did see that quote. And it was, it was, it was real because it was like he just finished with like 23 and 12. What are you talking about? He just talked. I like how locked I, in he is, too, it seems. Oh, yeah. Like, he, he does seem yeah. like he's different. We saw him at the ESPYs. Cool dude, too. Mm -hmm. Good dap. We are dapping up, like, 7'4". Giants. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because, yeah. like, you go in and you're literally in a stump. Yeah, hugging hey, his waist. You got a good yeah. belly button, man. Yeah, you got to go head. You got to go hand <laughs> yep. high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bingo. Small yeah. in his cologne. Some videos got, coming out of people, you know. Wow. Burying your head in his chest. Yeah. 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 You got a good belly button. Hey, Perk, how impressive is it? I, just, I think we just saw the other day. Sabonis, did he break the record for most double doubles in a row? With like yeah, 50 and leading the league in triple doubles. 50 something in a row? Like that's uh, insane, Don't get right? into your triple double conversation. No, I'm just saying, though. Well, he is, mm -hmm. but it's very impressive. And you know what? He was snubbed from being an all star, but he will make an all NBA team. When you think about the best bigs in the league, obviously you have Jokic, you have Embiid, okay? Then Giannis. Garza. Luka. N not yet. He's in, not close. <laughs> not yet. Close. So, not yet. Next. But next in line, you could say Anthony Davis or Sabonis. Sabonis is averaging 19, 13, and 9. If you got that right, that'd be, that'd be remarkable. If you just got those stats right. I'm, I'm pretty accurate on that. I'm 19, 13, and 9. 19, is that the greatest 19.7, 13.7. And 8.3. Wow. Close. Oh. Mm. Well, after, uh, after round last night's game. I round up. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every night it's going to change in that whole thing. Yeah. I think uh, let's hit Reese back. Let's see if he got through there because I would like to have a Sweet 16 conversation. I feel like I'm going to pay attention more to the NBA whenever you're here on mm -hmm. Thursdays. I agree. I want to let you know that. I'm telling you. Like, it's a good time to be a it, fan of the league, too. You've told us it, that the last few weeks. The playoffs have started, especially in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. There's so much – moving going on so if you go and look at the play in turn from the fourth to the eighth spot look at this like to the tenth well 11th spot you're looking at the rockets the rockets win the game golden state lose the rockets move into the tenth spot then when you look at you know from the fourth to the sixth spot 
all this could change. Like these games are separated by like two and a half, two and a half games. So like, and all these teams play against each other. How are the Lakers doing? The Lakers on the way out or the uh, way up? Well, they're on the way up, but oh, I've, good. they're going to finish. I feel like they're going to finish in the ninth spot. They could possibly move up to the eighth spot. Um, but Has they, anyone clinched yet? The playoffs. Uh, top I think I think one team. You know has. who you know who clinched? Who the Celtics? Oh, not the that's West, so weird. I had no idea. <laughs> the only, team, only team that's clinched a playoff spot. We haven't even mentioned them once. Only one team has only in the entire one? NBA. In the we, entire we don't need NBA, to, we don't only need to one mention, team. We don't need to mention them right now. Well, I mean, you were talking about the, defense earlier. They're the number one defense efficiency team, but that's fine. Second, uh, Minnesota number one. <laughs> You're just making up stats. <laughs> I know, the, the stat was top three. It's like the two teams yeah. that have been in the top three of offense and defensive efficiency. Not nah, the Celtics up there, but they see. But the Western them. Conference is so much better than the Eastern Conference. That Western Conference got all the stars. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And they're going to chew each other up, and we'll just be waiting. Well, I think Draymond us. Green's going to spit them all. On. Think about it. The Lakers are eleven games above five hundred. They're in the ninth spot. That's how great the Western Conference yeah. is. Yeah, and on the Eastern Conference, you got the Boston Celtics. Boom. And you got who the gives Bucks, a Milwaukee fuck USA. Bucks. <laughs> the Bucks and the Knicks. The Bucks are so like their record's great. They're the you, two seed, but they just don't feel like the Knicks. The Knicks. Yeah, you've been Bucks pushing that for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's earned. They earned you. Lockdown. They yeah. earned. Bruce back there, big Knicks fan. He's super yeah, he's bopping. Yeah, as, 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 body man, as he should. They, if they, we're they, fully <laughs> healthy, we win the East, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> They're also playing the, the Pacers truth. right now, which would be sick. Tyrese Halliburton's back, I heard. The Bulls yeah. just put a ball up in him on the last night. Yeah, he's back, but he's not really. So, well, so what happened? He came on our show, mm -hmm. then he did fantastic, and then he got yeah. no. ice cold. All it's the All-Star break. break. It has. It, 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 we did not do anything to Tyrese Halliburton. The All-Star break happens, then teams... Like the Clippers. The, I got a lot of people Clippers. implying that it was our fault no. that Tyrese Halliburton got ice cold. He, he made a shot. He yeah. made a shot. Yeah, mm -hmm. first try. On the way out. Finished his story. So, I yeah. don't know. I just, I, I don't think he's healthy. I don't think he's 100% Yeah, because he rushed back because mm -hmm. of that 65 game rule. And you know guys want that extra money yeah. in case you can make the All-NBA. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah. You need to play 65 games. Hopefully Tyrese will get healthy because he was mm -hmm. superstar in this time. So good. Tyrese Halliburton. Caitlin Clark, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anthony Richardson, Bud. Paul Skeens, Ooh. Paul Skeens on Bingo. the baseball team. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> Indianapolis right now has got some young stars. Now, unless Big Three takes Caitlin Clark away from the WNBA. Whoa, 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 whoa! I thought it was an agreement. She'd play both. Yeah, you're right. That's what we agreed to because yeah. we're here in Indianapolis and we would like that. But Ooh. I don't know how many other people are talking about it. Let's stay in basketball. Let's go to college. Sweet 16 starts this evening, ladies and gentlemen. The host of College Game Day football and basketball, friend of the program, Reese Davis. Yeah, there he is. There you go. Reese. Hey. Reese. What's up, fellas? How we doing? 100% our fault. We missed the window when you were going to be traveling. We apologize. Thank you for making time here at the airport. You look <laughs> stupendous <laughs> right now. You need to know that. You like this Home Depot tie? I just did a thing with Home Depot, so I wanted to dress the part with the orange tie. Well, that's when doers get things done, yep. is Home Depot, and you are the biggest <laughs> doer I think I've ever uh, encountered. Let's talk about tonight's Sweet 16. There's a game tipping off at 10.09, Reese. I know it's not you know, ESPN, but like, what the hell are we doing? Is this normal? This is how this normally goes for a Sweet 16? Yeah, it, it is. Over the last several years, I think just to drive ratings across the country, that way the people on the West Coast are at home, too, but it would seem to me that maybe we could pull it back a little bit earlier, maybe start it, you know, around 6 Eastern time, you know, for the games that are being played in the East. That is a bit late for sure, I think. Yeah, the Iowa State-Illinois has a lot of intrigue. Obviously, a lot of people may be saying it's going to be the best game of the night, going to be late night. Maybe it's smart to keep us up all that time. Go ahead, AJ. Speaking of intrigue, Reese, of these four games happening tonight, I guess which one are you zeroed in on the most to see, like, hey, this could get interesting? Great question. Well, you know what? I think it's probably the four games tonight in the East and the West. I, I'm probably on the uh, the Iowa State game more than anything else, just simply because I think it's going to be the best game. Uh, I have Illinois winning that game, but I think that uh, Iowa State, as well as it has played really all season, but particularly starting with the Big 12 tournament, they've shown some offense. Um, you know, Taman Lipsy is a great star for them. So I think that's probably going to be – as intriguing a game uh, as I can imagine. Man, I know we have a rematch of the national championship game last year, but I, I really think uh, I think UConn, especially playing close to home, uh, will will be able to roll in that game. And the other two 
could be solid, but um, but that that's the one I think that'll be the best game of the night. All right, let's talk about that UConn team because you said you feel like they're going to be able to roll. It seems to be what the books believe as well. Eleven and a half point mm-hmm. spread here in Sweet Sixteen. That team is just better than everybody. I know uh, Greeny has said he thinks that UConn could make the playoffs in the Eastern <laughs> Conference of the NBA. Now I think he's trying to make a point, obviously, just to embellish how great you know UConn is. Why are they so good? And this is a repeat on deck, is what we all see here. I think so. I think they'd have to play their B game. The reason I think that they're so good is, and Perk would, you know, be on board with a team like this. I think they can beat you a lot of different mm-hmm. ways. Um, they can have hot nights from the perimeter. They've got a couple of bigs. They've got not only a couple of bigs. They've got one giant in uh, Donovan Klingon. They've got a lot of versatile players. Got a guy, Cam Spencer, who's just been, you know, shooting the lights out uh, pretty much all season. They've got versatility at several positions and they've got depth and you know like one of their players said the other day you know if the ball doesn't find you that night oh well too bad it'll find you the next night and that's why i think look they're not invincible anybody can play poorly and and lose but i do think they're the best team and reese you know what else they have a hell of a coach that I feel like is going to be a hell of an NBA coach one day and Coach Hurley. That's what Perk yeah. said about this March Madness no, tournament. Uh, he said his coaches have been coaching their asses off in this tournament. I I agree with him. Perk, let me ask you this, though. I mean, Danny is a – I think he's the face of college basketball right now, especially if they were to win again. But there's also the disposition, uh, which, you know, he's a fiery dude, and he's a quirky dude. He wears the same underwear mm-hmm. until they lose. He won't move stuff in his office if they're on a winning streak. I mean, like does that play in the like, NBA? It if does. That is, if that's his goal. It does. It's just it got to be the right situation with the right personnel around him, right? Tom Thibodeau is a fiery dude. Uh, Coach Finch for the Minnesota Timberwolves, he's a fiery dude. So, and it's success happening. So, it just have to be the right situation. But, Reese, I want to go to Friday because I'm looking at this matchup. Does Duke stand a chance mm. against U of H? Hey. Does they? I, I think they're good. I think they're going to win the game. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh no, Perk. That's not good for you, Perk. Oh, no. <laughs> um, now, Duke has, to, Duke has to display some toughness that a couple of times this season hasn't been manifested. Um, they haven't been the toughest team when they played Carolina either time. But I think they, they found a little rhythm, a little edge here. McCain's a great shooter. And this is more about my worry that Houston will go into some type of prolonged offensive funk than it is about me thinking Duke is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is more about my concern for Houston offensively. You know what you're getting from them defensively and on the boards. I mean, they, um, you know, they, they play their guts out every second of every game. And I don't worry about that. I do worry about them going stone cold. I worry about them getting in foul trouble. They were able to escape A&M the other night. But um, I think Houston is probably the better team for a series. But I've got Duke for um, for the one-shot deal here. And we hope Philip Poskey's still healthy. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. How big of a dog he is. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you. Travel safely, Reese. All right, buddy? All right, yeah. Ladies See and gentlemen, later. Reese Davis. Uh, Thank you, Philip Poskey, as you do recall. They had to amputate a leg after a court rushing incident that took place, <laughs> yep. and then a week later, windmill dunking. Mm-hmm. So Wolverine, but you remember this? Yeah. Yeah. Jay Billis was like, "Oh god, talking about pressing charges yeah. and all that dumb yep. shit." Yeah, and that guy's gonna beat the fuck out of your team. <laughs> That's right. U of H. Filipowski's about to go. I, I feel sorry for their loss. <laughs> <laughs> the U of H? Huh? I got U of H. No, no. He, he just said Reese. Just yeah, said. it's yeah. over. But, I mean, I love Reese. I love everything about Reese, but U of H. I'm telling you, it's a different type of it's a different type of animal. You know what? Let me tell you about Reese. The, the he, uh, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. right? The he Reese. Hit, he hit one. I think. He hit one. The last one he said hit. I forget which game it was. I didn't bet blindly alongside every game that he made, and he does all. You know, you never know a college basketball, and that's sure. real. But there was a few there that he – and they're all – Oh, yeah, yeah, he had New Mexico in the Elite Eight, and I believe they got beat by about 40 in the first round. <laughs> and that's why the madness of March is beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's why we love them. Yeah, bingo. Jay, well yeah. said. I'm going to tell you a game not to sleep on. <laughs> okay. The Tennessee game, Tennessee-Creighton, 
That's going to be a, oh, yeah. a high good ass game. Tennessee can fill up the bucket, yeah. as can Creighton. Excited I mean, to watch it. That, yeah, we'll be asleep. Yeah, 10 o'clock again. The two best games <laughs> tonight. That's Friday night. That's Friday, Friday night, night brother. I know. That's fine. You're going to be at the Tim Whistle. Friday night, brother. I'm not going to be at the Tim Whistle yet. But that, the end of that game, you're going to be at the Tin Roof. And, and that, that is game, a matter of fact. Yeah, that, that would be a matter of fact. Yes, yes we know it. You know but it. still. You and Gumpy will be like, ah, it's a downstairs spot. It's not just days. that one. The one, bef- the one before these 10 o'clock start at 940. Well, let's not give those two games a pass either. All right. Well, we appreciate <laughs> the fact that we're looking out for the left side of the country. Yeah, sure. Hey, they're yeah. going to see you whenever they they're home. Care. That matters. But they've had to deal with this the entire time. I guess there's like three out of the four governors running for governorship here of uh, a gubernatorial uh, <laughs> campaigns <Yep. laughs> here in Indiana trying to move us to central time. Please. Okay. Please. Ooh, Hold yeah, the phone. Kind of pumped Dude, about yeah, it. Yeah. That's that crazy. person. Yes. Well, it's three out of, I think it's like numerous ones. We're like, just changing time. Changing time. That is so cool. For 36 years, I've been living on the Eastern Time Zone. I'd be, I'm interested in a change. Well, the thing about it is you go down to some of these central, I think Houston central, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You go to Houston, Nashville, yeah. Dallas, I think is also central time. Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Chicago. Green Bay, Wisconsin. Yep. You, you do like, now Green Bay, you live there obviously, and Iowa, I believe, is also central yes. time. But as somebody who has been an Eastern time zone kid my whole life, you go like for the weekend or for like four days, all of a sudden you're like, this might be the right one. Mm -hmm. Games end, like not terrible time, just like mentally, like going to bed. Sign me up. As opposed to that. And then I think six o'clock wake ups. Oh, yeah. Like you feel so more accomplished. It's actually seven. It's like (laughs) everything about central time zone is like, I feel like the right answer. It's right in the middle. I'm biased, Mm -hmm. obviously, because I grew up, you know, until I moved here, I'd always lived in the central time zone. There's just something different about Monday night football starting at 720, 7.15. That's perfect. About Sunday night football starting at 7.20, 7.15. That's perfect. Kickoffs noon. on Sundays, noon kickoffs. Fucking awesome. Very early though. No. Like noon kickoffs for college football, that's eleven. Yeah, perfect. but that's it's all great. but but I mean it is kind of nice. If I was playing it. Well think about those playoffs. Sure. Think about those playoff weekends when we had to wait till three thirty for the first game. That would it be sucks. nice? Would it be nice two thirty? Hello, two thirty coverage starts at one o'clock. <laughs> Holy shit, we gotta make it to lunch. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> I can make it to lunch. That's exactly. easy. Nine AM internationals though. That's fine. That's that, all right. That's, no one's watching those anyway, though, right? <laughs> well, if you wanted to. I think they're already 9 a.m. Yeah, it's eight thir- it'd be 8.30. Yeah. Would yeah. Be the- Figure it out, Gumps, if you're going to bash it. <laughs> He's a West Coast. I was West Coast. He's I don't know bother yeah. me either way. Yeah. I don't, Gump's I don't care. Gump's got a 2 a.m. international yeah. game. Yeah, he doesn't live on a time zone. Yeah, you're right. Gumpy time. I do like zone. East Coast time zone better than West Coast, though. Uh, agreed. Yeah. Coming we from know. somebody who lives both worlds. <laughs> the central time, I think, is the winner. I yeah. agree. Right in the middle. Speaking of winner. Perk, you want to win some money for some people? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you shoot a basketball right now? I'm not going to put you on spot. Don't, don't. Can I shoot a basketball? Don't. Uh, Shit, don't go away. <laughs> what you need me to do? Perk. Well, it's not necessarily me. It's the people. Yep. Okay. What they need me to do? Well, you tell me. What? Where? You 65% from the foul line. We're not going to put that on you. No, Unless that's fine. I mean, Man, just don't were, don't be a wuss. Fucking shoot it from up here. Whoa, that's that's what a tough. what a basketball is. Right here, tough shot. Right here. He only needs one. He's it's a Texas guy. Yeah, you can get a feel out. You'll be if the feel out falls, win. Yeah. Okay, but you yeah. you have about five opportunities. At this. So what's the prize? Uh, twenty five people win five hundred dollars. Really? Yeah. Twenty five people go be happy with Big <laughs> 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 We like oh, to hear that. Hill, right? like hold on, hold on. You got, you got your head. Oh, oh, right, pocket, yeah. right pocket. Right pocket. Yeah. Right pocket. Right pocket on ground. Boom. Boom. That's there a long go. way down. Look there at how go. far Don is. Yeah, I know. Jeez. Jeez. Come on, Sir, Perk. which Come hoop do you want to shoot Perk. at? Whichever one. Okay, this one. It's far. All right, now right, a big Perk can drain this moonshot. How small the ball is. Five yeah, shots, dude. Right? Five shots. 25 people. Five hundred dollars. All big perks got to do. Oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> good feel. Out. Hey, it's good hey, though. Feel out. That's a feel out. Feel out. See, you know, got a good got feel for it. Go. You're not gonna loosen up. Wow. Okay, Ooh. we're getting close. That was close. Just, that was close. Shot. Just shoot the shit. Shoot the shot. Twenty-five people. Five hundred. Oh, oh man. That was, that was it. You're getting closer. Come on, Perk. Come on, Perk. dialed. All big perks got to do is bury the shot. And twenty-five people. Oh, oh man, you're right there. This is impressive just it, now. It little is. Effort. It's remarkable. 25 people, $500. Big perk. Oh, oh another one right here. Another one right there. Another one right there. All right, 
Wait, hold on, though. Hold on, though. Hold, on, hold on, though. I've never seen the style in which you are shooting this. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is out of range. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. That's why it's a moonshot. It's a, it's an ultimate equalizer. Yeah. You should have seen what it did to Tyrese Halliburton. We don't have enough time on this particular day. He was here for about 15, 20 of these things. Right here? It wouldn't take me. 25 people, $500. Big perk! Oh, right here, right here. That looked good for me. <laughs> How many more do you think? Three more. Three, three more. Three more. Right. Got three more tips. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to need it, though, because on this particular shot, big perk's going to drain. 25! Oh, that was all right. over it. He's all over it. Perfect distance. Perfect. Beal. 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 <laughs> Somebody's gay, Bruce. Somebody's at the gate. Oh no. Uh, yeah, it took uh probably twenty. Twenty five, yeah, twenty five, thirty. Okay, here we go. Oh, Come on, Perk. Come on, Perk. Oh, there you go. Here we go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Big Perk has four opportunities. Only going to need this one. Oh. Okay. oh. 25 people. <laughs> $500. All Big Perk's got to oh, do. No, 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 that's not okay. the right one. That was worst attempt yet. Wing us, Wing, Wing, yeah. Wing, yeah. yeah. Open yeah. the door. Open the gate. Perk. Open the gate. Come on, yeah. Bill. <laughs> 25 people. Yep. Five. Oh. oh. To the bank. Mm. All right, Perk. That's a big three ball right there. That's right. Here we go. Looks huge. 25 people. All right, next week. Last one, last one. Last, last one, last one, last one. Last one. No, this, here we go. Hey, hold on, hold on, Perk. Hold on. This is it. 40 people. $500. 40 people depending on me. No, no, we're pumped for them. Yeah, yep. Get going. Oh. 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 All right. Sorry, Perk. All right, it's not an easy shot. Not an easy shot. That's right. We got next week. We will not judge the entirety of the day by just the shooting performance. No, no, no. No. That's a difficult shot. What you did today, awesome. Yeah. We appreciate yeah. you, Big Perk. Yeah. Big Perk. Appreciate you. We can't wait for next Thursday, Me. just like you were about an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the entire thing. AJ, great work. Reese Davis, thank you. Jet passing, stopping by. It's opening night day. Opening mm -hmm. day, Just baby. started. Can't wait. That's where I'm going. I'm gonna I'm gonna sprint downstairs and turn it on. <laughs> first game started yet? Just about to. Yeah. Three oh five, first pitch. They're throwing fucking heat too. He Corbin oh, Burns. Yeah. Dog. Yeah. Burns is a burner, they say oh, it. Yeah, yeah, they do. The MLB chose him for a reason to start this entire Ooh, thing. Fucking nasty cutter on that guy. Really? Just throw gas too. Yeah. yeah. Trout's gonna take the fucking yard. Well, I saw Trout had to watch a Shohei Otani tribute video the other night. Mm -hmm. What's that about? Well, he was he was He's doing one of these the whole time. He didn't even. Well, he thought, we're allowed to leave this place? <laughs> really? Trout has been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Refuses to leave. That's because he wants to see him win. Mm -hmm. But from what I've been told, that ain't going to happen. They keep giving him hundreds of millions of dollars, too. That certainly doesn't hurt. Yeah, they gave a bunch of money to that third baseman who doesn't even want to play anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hates baseball. <laughs> Let's go, Angels. That's Love right. baseball. <laughs> Let's go, Angels. All right. Sean, all Casey, Sean Casey's throwing the first pitch out for the Reds just he is. to let you yeah. know. Wow. When's that? He's going to he's gonna do hour. something sweet. In an you know. hour. An hour? Yeah, let's FaceTime him. We're going to cold call Sean Casey right <laughs> yep. now. He's probably, he's probably warming up, he's, he's been, he's he's been posting. He's been warming up. Yeah. Is he going to – Oh, yeah. Oh, he's, he's going to be He's going to so fucking juice. burn one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he better have his goatee back. He's not a hitting coach anymore? No, nah, he, he he's not supposed to be caged in. No, the Yankees oh. failed him. Mm. They did. Mm. He joined the team halfway through. And they, they were about like 170 well. before him and 175 after. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. .005 better. They were above the fucking Mendoza line, Tony. Okay. Bruce said they asked him to come back. They did. Let's get to a break for about 20 hours or so. Big shout to Perk. Safe travels Thank out of you, here. Perk. Perk. I appreciate y'all. Let's enjoy the long, long, long night tonight. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lock in. <laughs> Turn me good. Yeah. Long, long, long. Best, best, best game is the last game. It's only, it's only long if the shit is born. It's going to be exciting. Hell, yeah. That's right. Well said, Hey, Perk. man. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Just like we did today. <laughs> yep. Hey, be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. We're in this thing together. Team on me. Team on three.
One, two, three. Three. Goodbye. <laughs>